Hello there, ladies, gentlemen and unicorns. Welcome to another little Sunday stream. Sadly, uh, Lady Mistleaf apparently is having some problems that it's stuck in the loading loop. So if anyone knows how uh, to fix this or got any ideas, please put it in the chat so that yeah, Lady Mistleaf can also join uh, this uh, beautiful day, I wanted to say, but it's already evening here. So yeah, thank you so much for uh, dropping by. As you might have noticed, uh, there's some background music again. I thought maybe I make this a thing, especially when I'm doing something creative, like as will be today, drawing, designing stuff. So um, yeah, if it's too loud or if it's too quiet, probably it's mostly too loud. <laughs> Please let me know so that I can turn down the volume. Okay, we already got the two viewers, as uh, uh, Twitch tells me, but I think it's more judging from the people that are active in the chat. Thank you so much for dropping by. So uh, what's on the menu today? Um, as you probably have noticed, I have my trusty Wacom stylus in my hand. So it's going to be a bit about drawing and designing stuff as is already, well, you probably have read uh, the, the, the headline. <laughs> so you already know that I'm about to uh, visually mock up, design a uh, strategy game. And what for, you might ask? I'm working on the Ludum Dara 46 post-mortem and as always I got a couple of throwaway jokes and lines in there and there's a one line where I say yeah I'm not quite sure if this my idea might work as an action game so maybe a text adventure or a strategy game and just for those two <laughs> suggestions I thought I'd do a little mock-up. I already got the text adventure down which was uh, a lot of fun because um, I did it in basic in DOSBox. Of course, I could have just made the mock-up in Photoshop, but I thought, yeah, if I want to change some things and so on, and maybe, maybe even hint at some interactivity and so on. So yeah, basically I mocked up uh, uh, one and a half screens of text adventure, including this top bar. My inspiration for the text adventure part was um, the late Infocom text adventure Sherlock, which I had tried out to play by myself uh, at least uh, for half an hour or so. But at least in terms of the visual style, this was for the text adventure. The other thing is, um, and this is what we're going to do today, um, is that I thought, yeah, I need also a, a archetypical, stereotypical uh, strategy game. So, um, and yeah, this is at least what uh, I have in, in store for today, that we all come up together with some kind of, yeah, the thing or screen that looks at first glance, yeah, this appears to be a strategy or a tactics game or something along those lines. Uh, incidentally, uh, one of my favorite gaming magazines, uh, the German GameStar, had the 100 best strategy games in last month's issue. So um, I thought I could mine this for inspiration, but most of them looked, well, not really like a strategy game. They all looked yeah, it, it's weird because from, from just the screenshots that I saw there, I, I thought, yeah, I, I can clearly see it at, at first glance what is all common to strategy games. But I realized, yeah, maybe I want to go in more into the retro game direction because, yeah, for some reason this is more what's to my liking. But then again, I thought, yeah, but I also don't want it to have to be too pixely. So I think um, what I'll be arriving at is some kind of retro inspired but full HD screen for yeah, a, a strategy game. So um, yeah, and this is the plan for today. And oh my God, already five viewers. So this uh, doubled quickly. <laughs> Sorcerer says, oh, no video quality options this week. Uh, don't I have? settings options, uh, all, well, I got auto and oh, 1080p source. Should I stream at 720 perhaps? Well, I at least let me check at which frame rate I'm streaming because I think um, I went down to 30 FPS unless I'm playing a super fast FPS FPS, first person, frames per second. Yeah, it's the same acronym. I just realized that FPS is <laughs> means the same thing. Yeah, let me quickly check at what FPS I'm shooting, but I can't go into the profile right now, but I can go into settings. Output, recording, frame rate, um, video, there we go. Yeah, I'm recording at 30 
FPS today. Is this too much? Uh, Lady Mislip says, turns out Twitch hates Edge. Chrome works fine, Edge still <laughs> hates after restart. I'm not quite sure whether it's Edge or it's just everyone ignoring or uh, the outright hostility towards a web browser from Microsoft. Could be either of those things, yeah, at, at least, well, you have to go with the lesser evil, I think, which might be Chrome. <laughs> and also, uh, Tutvari Official is here. Hi, uh, thank you so much for dropping by. Yeah, as always, our disclaimer when I say the word that starts with you and ends with Nikorn. Um, let's all have a sip of water. It's healthy to stay hydrated and also fun to stay alive. Depends on where you are, probably. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, so let's uh, switch over to my um, desktop. Already started Photoshop here and let me try if my tablet works. Of course it does not. I even started my computer anew because uh, the weird Wacom driver said I actually I need to restart my computer and then it worked. I started Photoshop and now it doesn't work anymore because of course it never works. Okay, so let, let me try running Photoshop again. So, how was your week? <laughs> Mine was as all my weeks are a little bit stressful. Like I, I said last week, um, yeah, I'm in the process there are things in the flow, so to speak, at work. So yeah, I have a little bit more on my plate than usual, which is fine, but again, in, at, at weekends you just want to want to relax and I feel that two days are just a little bit too short to relax. Okay, so no way come here. So let me plug it out and plug it in again and usually this works. Okay, we're back at the control panel. <laughs> My god, Wacom tablet settings. Yeah, it's it's the pen, it's, it's connected, otherwise it wouldn't even launch. The tablet properties, eraser mapping, yeah, it, it looks, use Windows ink is off, which is very important. Yeah, it technically it should work. Oh, look at this, it's the Intuos 4M. Uh, I think someone had asked me which uh, uh, tablet I use and I said I don't quite know the name. I think it's a four, but yeah, it's the medium sized Intuos 4. Why is this not working? Uh, it got all the icons there on, on the heads up uh, again. Uh, which Wacom do you have? Yeah, it's the Intuos 4 uh, Medium. Let me just check again. Yeah, it's the Intuos 4M. There we go. It's not the newest one, but I really like it because it still has this very uh, shiny surface on where to draw. And this is since my first ever Wacom, I get just get used to this very f smooth surface. Because with the other ones, uh, the newer ones, I think they are a little bit rough and you just use up pen nibs one after the other. And with this one here, I, I need to change my pen nib like once a year, which is quite good because it, it feels like, yeah, Wacom is making their money mostly, yeah, with, uh, uh, what are the tablets called where you can draw on the screen? I don't recall right now, but yeah, they make the money with those and of course with pen nibs because those things are expensive and also those, uh, stylus, styluses, styles, stylusy are. Oh, there we go. Just yeah. So um, how did I fix it? I unplugged my tablet three times, and now with the fourth time, it it works. So wonderful. Okay, Cintiq, yeah, that's the one. I always thought it would be so nice to draw on a Cintiq, but then uh, I heard people say, yeah, uh, you need to get used to it. Of course, it, it's not like drawing on paper. And some also advise getting some certain Cintiq gloves that yeah, you, your uh, palm rests easier on, on, the, on the screen. Then again, of course, you don't know about screen radiation and so on and so forth. So I, yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy with my external drive, uh, external drive, <laughs> external tablet here so there we go the usb dr drivers are just junk uh yeah i can completely a uh, second uh, this uh, i've never heard anyone that who plugged in a wacom tablet and it worked uh, from the get-go there was always something wrong and especially with windows ink um, there would be weird things like every time you click 
it would have this little ripple effect and then you couldn't uh, uh, because the operating system would get in between your Wacom input and what the Wacom tablet would read so somewhere some some presses wouldn't register or would register down yeah, it's just a, a hot mess in a sense and um, let me just quickly see if I got here in Photoshop the pressure sensitivity down that it works yeah this looks good because that's another thing there with uh, uh, Wacom tablets and Photoshop is uh, you need to manually disable in a preferences file in the Photoshop folder in the user settings where you just say don't use system stylus otherwise yeah this, this pressure sensitivity wouldn't wouldn't work it's like I said yeah it's, it's a mess it's a mess Wacom in tours I have one uh, it was a nightmare says Commander Stitch to get the drivers to work and keep working uh, believe me, uh, uh, since Windows XP, <laughs> I think I've been uh, I've been wrestling the drivers <laughs> with each new system update because you don't change a thing. Uh, just one week later, you plug in your Wacom tablet and it doesn't work for some reason. So, but then again, um, in my opinion, well, I haven't tried many different uh, tablet styles, but to me, the Wacom ones I like the best in terms of how they feel of how quickly they update of yeah it, it feels very naturally in photoshop also in was it paint shop the one from corel or was it uh, yeah where it's, it's more artistic i'm not it wasn't probably not paint shop <laughs> but yeah i really feel um very at home with wacom but of course i have to deal with the drivers so yeah again back to to our um little project for today so I already uh, made a little uh, uh, well a little I started a canvas and this canvas is uh, twice the size um, well this is UHD and so it's it's yeah it's twice the width and twice the height so essentially it's it's four times the uh, uh, yeah a real estate screen real estate of HD why um, because I like uh, to to start very coarse and then I like to be able to go in to add any details and then I'm not that good at drawing details so when I scale it down by 50% then everything looks very crisp so yeah it's always easier to go uh, smaller when you start big than the other way around we all know this but but still um, Commander Stitch says uh, today during this stream I'm going to commit to finish the basic styling for the chat system oh this is wonderful <laughs> uh, so that uh, it's pretty much everyone sh listening and watching this uh, I feel we we can be productive together and get our individual projects going and just yeah just be chatting along the way it's easier for me because I don't need to um, use the keyboard and I can just draw and talk but then again of course it's a little bit easier if you're already writing on the keyboard and just uh, throw me a throwaway line that goes WTF or something like this okay so um, my first step is uh, I probably want to change the background color to something that's a bit darker because in before um, I have this little animation which I teased um, there we go uh, on I think was it uh, on our discord um, where some of the illustrations uh, look like this for the upcoming post-mortem and this is going to be an animation and behind there will be a big bad ugly monster uh, like I said, it's just for an illustration for my uh, idea finding process. So I want to have uh, more or less, well, not this style, well, maybe this style could work, but essentially just there is one big monster and there's a cityscape of some kind and there is the player with a heart or an item or something. So I want to have this reflected, uh, but uh, that you that looks at first glance like, like I said, like it's a strategy game. So what uh, is constitutes to me a strategy game at first glance some kind of grid I mean when you look at into the breach or um, the, all this civilization games yeah you can essentially see a tile grid so let me just find quickly into the breach so that uh, for those of you who don't have a mental image of course I, I, uh, I consent to you storing my cookies for your nefarious purposes there we go so yeah this is uh, I think a good example of what sorry clicked the wrong window of what a strategy game looks like to me what well, it's well 
if you want to be nitpicky, it's a tactics game and not a strategy game, but something along those lines because it looks, well, modern in a sense, but of course it got this, this pixel look and yeah, I really like how clean this looks. So maybe I want to keep pretty close to, to this style here. The other one is of course that came to mind is, what was it called? Battle Isle. That's a real uh, old retro game. It's a German game, as actually, and I think it started out on the Amiga. And let me zoom this one up. Yeah, this is also a tactics game. It's turn-based and also has this hexagon grid there. Let me see if I can find one where it's glaringly obvious. Okay, I can't in any zoom in any further, so here we are. So yeah, hexagons, hexagons, hexagons all the way. I think this is what instantly, at least, screams to me, strategy or tactics game. So let me find here my chat again. Um, Lady Mistleaf says, I'm also thinking of trying to implement a dialogue system for NPCs. Listening in the chat and looking at the progress is basically like coding with friends, lol. <laughs> yeah, coding with friends is one thing, uh, as you probably know me already. I, uh, I'm very chatty and usually when there is someone else in the room, especially if they want to get work done and I just keep merrily chatting along and just yapping and and uh, yeah, just uh, communicating uh, at every step how I feel about something. So you know what, maybe I want to have this kind of grid here, but maybe hexagons, could this work? I don't know, you know what, let's, let's make a quick hexagon grid and then yeah, put it in the perspective and see if, if this could work. But you know what, let's copy the screenshot here and Oh, look at this, already pasted it. Because, yeah, I, I just thought maybe I can use this little screenshot here. Where is, where are my controls? Oh, of course, must be too small. Um, that I can use this as a reference, just uh, for the layout, where things are, how big the text uh, uh, is, the labels, something, something like that. Okay, so where is Illustrator? There it is. So let's, yeah, let's make something 200 by 200 millimeters, sure. Why not? Maybe I should have done this before because uh, hexagon grids, uh, you might be using them more often than you would think. Okay, so I go with one centimeter by one centimeter and then, okay, first question. I think this one is lying on its side, so, I think this is how I see hexagons. Okay, if you hear some weird rumbling noises, it's our <laughs> washing machine having another one of uh, its freakouts. So yeah, this is this is just fine. This is just fine. Okay, so yeah, let me just very quickly do here the manual labor of creating a hexagon grid. Yeah, something just dropped from the washing machine. So this is when you put something on top of it and then it starts, yeah, going crazy. Uh, I mean, at least it's it's our equivalent of having a cat. So we don't have a cat that pushes down stuff <laughs> from surfaces. No, we got a washing machine. It's almost like a cat. Okay, you know what? I'm not quite sure if this... Well, okay, it looks it looks all right. It looks all right. So, yeah, you know what? Maybe I just group this and copy-paste and make this my hexagon grid. And once I'm done here with just this very, very coarse grid layout, I'm, I'm just trying out, maybe maybe try out the color scheme in Photoshop first, because I want to give it a bit more of a style than just, yeah, black outlines. <laughs> so yeah, this might might work as a hexagonal, maybe, maybe make it a bit, not quite sure if I want to go with this, or yeah, maybe, maybe I need another segment there, another row of hexagons down there, it just feels, just feels better. Okay, cool. so let's scale it up to fill to fill the artboard. Uh, 
There we go. Cool. Okay, save. Uh, this is... My god, I got so many uh, folders now and so many projects uh, uh, working <laughs> in parallel, as always. It's, I mean, it's essentially it's like this. If you start a project, a pet, uh, pet project of, of some kind, and then um, just a small thing, right? And then it starts getting bigger and bigger, and then you realize, yeah, yeah it's, it's too big. It's, it's already a chore to be working on it. So you start a smaller side pet project. And then this one grows, and it's not a site, a small site and pet project anymore. So it starts overscoping, or you start overscoping, and then for for this you need another very small side project. And this is at least it's it's how it is with me. It's just yeah, one project just ballooning, and so I start another one. Uh, okay, so hexagon grid version of one. I always. Um, suffix uh, my um, files with a version name because as soon as I write final um, you just jinxed it and it's not going to be the final one. A red hermit is there. No worries about being late. Uh, you know with me it's always a very <laughs> very slow start into the stream. So uh, just to give you a heads up where we are um, I'm doing a tactics strategy game mock-up and so far I just made a hexagon grid here in Illustrator because hexagons to me are uh, yeah strategy games okay but but uh, now I realized first uh, I need to have some kind of layout here of how I want it to look so yeah I just took this screen here from FTL as a reference and but now I just want to very roughly sketch out what I have in mind. And for this, uh, I always like to work small when I'm doing sketches, otherwise um, get lost in the detail quickly. Oh, Red Hermit just subscribed uh, at tier one, my God. Thank you so much for, for resubscribing and always subscribing. It's always, it's, it's really, it's, it's a great honor for you to keep subscribing <laughs> to this uh, little, poor little channel. <laughs> Um, where was I? Right, I, I like to sketch or, or to do some yeah, very basic sketching at a very small size, otherwise I get lost in the details. And this is why I started here with a, um, a canvas size of double the size of um, HD, so just that I can always go bigger and add in more details should I want to, but for sketching I really zoom it down as you just saw, so just that I don't start putting in too many details. Okay, so I'm just seeing my brush size and this is fine. You know what, maybe I should zoom in so that you can see a little bit better, I think. So, okay, so what, how do I want it to look? Okay, so for one thing here, maybe have my hexagonal grid, something like this, where here are the hexagons or so on. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a sketch, right? It's, <laughs> it's, it's an ugly sketch. So maybe, maybe get rid of those as well. And then I want to have some kind of indication here, uh, a token like like on a board game here for the player, as it I have it here in my mood reference here. So there might be the player. Okay, as so I'm moving the entire layer. Um, so my player would be this one, and I want them to be let's say here, and then maybe have give them a, some kind of. Uh, not a health bar, but maybe just the indicator that they are holding this heart here, as in the other thing. And there is maybe a cityscape on the grid, like you would have it in games like Civilization. And behind it there is a big, bad, snake-like monster with maybe two pincers, or what they are called something like this yeah and maybe have here some text something here for the enemy and other game typical text yeah and in the background what what does FDL have in the background also it's it's really it's just a bunch of stripes then okay then I, I, I can do this so yeah essentially yeah, it looks a lot like like FTL in this sense but uh, for me I think this this should be fine so at first glance you see yeah this looks to be like a strategy game and L Japeton, all right, it was Lepton, if I'm not mistaken. You wrote me how to pronounce your name. And I think it was Lepton, Lepton, not quite sure, but good evening. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, so with that being said, let's... Um, the first thing is, like I said, because I want to set the mood here, I, I probably just pick the colors from from this mock-up here. So, yeah, let's do this. The interesting thing here is this mock-up uh, started up, well, it's not a mock-up, it's an illustration. This illustration started uh, with a very um, strong contrast and then I milked it up essentially in, in the post step. So this is why it's, it's dark blue and not black. And you know what? I will do the same thing here. So yeah, it, it looks like it belongs together. So let me just find the Photoshop file that I can just copy and paste the adjustment layers. And this should save me some work. Okay, this one is just called Dark Entity. Cleanups Scaled Layers, there we go. This is a huge file. <laughs> yeah, this is the big bad monster that we're going to somehow work into um, this sketch here. And uh, where are the adjustment layers? Oh right, I did them in After Effects and not in Photoshop. So this is rather pointless, but at least I can use the background here. So if I use the background also here as the background, I think this would work nicely. And interestingly, it looks a little bit like um, this blue thing here, this, this blue color of the FTL background, so which is which is not too bad, I would say. Lipton says, uh, yes, Lipton, so thank God at once I remembered how to pronounce a nickname there. Okay, so the next thing is already prepared this nice hexagon script, uh, hexagon grid. So does it look nice? Does it look like it, how it would look on a game board? Probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And maybe maybe we want to have it also like a chessboard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, this was too much. Okay. So the other the only question is what how to deal with those half hexagons here. And I just leave them perhaps. Or you know what would would look actually a bit nicer if I didn't delete here the entire a double row here but just the bottom part so yeah it's it's now eight by nine but at least it's yeah it looks a bit more symmetrical because yeah as we all know hexagons are not qu uh, quadratic quadrat quadrat square that's the word square <laughs> okay so i want uh, to give them a little bit of maybe some kind of sci-fi look or something okay so I make a background here that is just plain black, so I can visualize things better. There we go, and since I'm working in C, Y, M, K, so yeah, I'm, I, <laughs> I'm used to, to using this abbreviation in German, which we call just Smyk, so this is why uh, C, Y, M, K, yeah, this is correct. I always have to, have to think about it, and then I say it wrong in the end. So color settings, Smick, yeah. Um, I don't want this. I want to switch to RGB. How do I do this? Document setup, document color mode. Oh, it's already RGB color, so this is good because the blacks, um, as you can see here, the black is not entirely black, but it is this uh, washed out gray, yellow, black because this is what you would get in print. Okay, so this looks better. And I duplicate my layer now because I'm always a little bit uh, uh, concerned that I somehow uh, mess things up and then I can't go back. So this is my version control, it's just copying something and <laughs> disabling uh, the view uh, before. Okay, um, yeah, this is the color palette we want to go for, actually this, this blue. Uh, uh, pencil here, the blue color that I used for, for, the, for this very rough sketch. Actually, I like it. Maybe I just make it a bit more saturated like this and use this color here for um, the hexagons for the playing field, at least for now. There we go. You know what? I also will add this color here to my swatches, make a new color group. Includes watches convert process to global. 
this is good. So um, I always like to work uh, with global colors in Illustrator, especially when I'm in the process of finding a certain look, because the good thing is when you change a global color there, of course, it applies to every instances where this color was used. So if you, if you really want to just try out some color harmonies, you don't have to start over and always have to reselect everything. Okay, so this again, we make it black. This is good. And you know what, let's save this again. And yeah, I wanted, uh, like I said, I want to make those a bit more interesting. So I just duplicate those again. And hmm, maybe offset their outlines a bit. Let's, yeah, let's, let's just experiment a little bit. Okay, path, average, offset, outline stroke, offset path. I go with offset path and use a minus value, something like this. And look at this, it all already looks a bit, looks a bit more interesting. So I don't need a fill color, <laughs> despite it sounding just like my name. And maybe give this here, uh, this inner border here a different color. Something like this. So yeah, this looks looks pretty sci-fi. Looks pretty spacey. Or maybe if we make it black, yeah, it, it's a bit, sorry. It's a bit hard to tell what's going on here. Yeah, I think this, this white could work. I just make the stroke a bit thicker, like this. Oh yeah, maybe, you know what, Let, let's try finding, uh, experimenting with uh, how to fill these shapes, maybe white doesn't work too well actually <laughs> um, but why is it white I made it black and somehow it turned white there we go this is I mean this looks like some kind of, of yeah uh, grid but uh, with holes in it so it's not a tile grid but just a, a like a net of some kind but yeah it's I'm not really happy with this maybe if it's just a bit darker than everything hmm I mean, it, it would work at a small size where you, where you can see which tile is where. Actually, for some reason, I don't know why it reminds me of the um, uh, yeah user interface elements in XCOM, at least in the new XCOM. It's got this little holographic feel to it. You know what? No, no, I will just leave it uh, transparent like this and then maybe change things up in Photoshop. So uh, the black outline actually I like very much, but it's not that I like it because it's black, but I like it because it looks like it's transparent so that the tiles have some kind of spacing, some, yeah, some, some padding in between them. So let's again, I will duplicate what I have just to not break things. And I also will offset their paths and I will get rid of this outline here. So, so uh, object path offset. So, maybe like so, but it duplicated it, right? It, <laughs> thank you, um, illustrator. So, um, no, this was something else. Oh, this was the color that I just copied. So, yeah, um. The path is offset, which is good, <laughs> but also um, I can get rid of what's inside there. Wonderful. This is not what I wanted. So um, yeah, good question how to get rid of this. Yeah, you, you can probably tell that I'm not too uh, familiar with Illustrator. I mean, I know my work, uh, my way around it for the most part, but doing this kind of special thing here. Yeah, maybe, maybe I just did things wrong. So yeah, let's just delete this. And maybe there was an option where I could, could change this, the offset value. So again, okay, no border here. And object path, simplify, no, outline stroke. No, it's not outline stroke, I don't have a stroke. Um, object, there we go, path. Offset path preview, yeah. Joins miter or round, yeah. This is not really interesting. Miter limit offset, 
Yeah, this is nice, but I don't need an additional set of paths. I... Hmm. I mean, like I said, it, it looks it looks pretty pretty nice. <laughs> um, what kind of effects you can come up with here? I mean, this looks. If I zoom in, you can see this looks pretty interesting and intricate. But it's it's, it's not what I want. I want minus one there. I want. I want just just want some spacing between them. Maybe. Oh, of course. Oh, now I know what what the problem is. So um, it created groups on top of groups and I want to delete what's underneath. So I'm not quite sure if there is a quick and easy way to do this. There, I mean, there probably is, but uh, it's not something that I know. So I just delete um, the underlying ones. Oh my God, this, I mean, when I'm doing things like this, it actually, I mean, it looks like I'm doing something wrong here because this probably is not the intended way of doing things when you have to go in and manually delete stuff like this. I mean, it always feels to me like, my God, we could automate this somehow. But uh, yeah, now is not uh, neither the time nor the place. <laughs> but uh, I, I think I retweeted this a couple of days before. It's programmers uh, are spending hours uh, to automate a task that would have taken them five minutes just once <laughs> so red hermit says you're not too shabby with illustrator i've been using adobe for 20 plus years and always avoided illustrator yeah it's 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 weird illustrator to me feels like it's it's the weird kit <laughs> of of the bunch for some reason i think it's because adobe um i'm i'm not quite certain if this is true but i think adobe uh, just purchased illustrator from a different company like they did it with a uh, cool edit pro which became uh, adobe audition and yeah essentially just changed the icons and the splash screen so that it would read uh, copyright adobe but the underlying concepts of course are strangely different to other adobe programs and uh, i mean it still persists to this day so yeah to me also uh, illustrator feels like the odd one the odd kid <laughs> out so why can't I select this one probably because it's I I goofed but yeah um, oh no it was just a display error wonderful so yeah um, this is another installment of probably how not to do things <laughs> but like I said uh, it's for for this purpose here it's fine it's it's okay if i spend five minutes just manually deleting these parts uh yeah uh, by the way sorry for cutting off your comment <laughs> red hermit he further writes um always defaulted to photoshop but i've already learned some great tips from you oh thank you <laughs> and see that i've been doing uh, some things the hard way by doing photoshop by going photoshop with everything i mean in the end uh, as we all know it's the tools the right tool for the right job but this uh, doesn't mean that there's always the one tool for for the right job it's which tool you're most comfortable with and if you're faster doing path animations or anything well not probably not animations but but yeah path tracing in photoshop by all means stay with photoshop uh, but sometimes uh when when you feel the oats <laughs> in a sense and you want really to 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 uh, yeah uh, learn something new as it is uh, then it, it can be quite interesting but of course it's not when you're already stressed out and in a project and you need to get things done and you know okay with this tool everyone is doing it with this tool maybe i should try it with that tool and of course the first time you try it you have a bad experience <clears throat> unity at g during game jams <laughs> Um, so yeah, take it for, for what it's worth from me because as you know, I've been doing things wrong. Oh my God, I have to do the same thing again here because of course this, what I did here is the same thing again. Okay, so let, let's not do this then. I mean, I like how this, how this looks because now you can see it's, it's really it's transparent, which is good, which is to my liking and I will just give this another try and go here with the transparent a fill and a gray stroke and again try object 
object path outline stroke. No, it was not outline stroke. Why do I always keep defaulting to outline stroke? Maybe I'm having a stroke. <laughs> okay, so again, select everything. Good. Object. Path. Offset path. Probably it's because both things are starting with an O. So let's go by offset of minus one millimeter. And get the stroke white and make it a bit bigger at least yeah the, the stroke like yeah like this looks a bit like some kind of ice field now when I'm looking at it smaller but yeah I think I think this should be fine at least as a starting point then in in Photoshop or you know what maybe I want to have this um, Sorry, this is undo. Maybe I want uh, um, to have the path offset even a bit further inwards. So undo, undo, there we go. Edit, no, object, path, offset path, and it's not, let's, let's go with minus two millimeters. And maybe not entirely white, but maybe, maybe just a, a very bright blue because uh, then I can just change the hue easily in Photoshop for everything. Yeah, I think this looks this looks better. Um, yeah, actually let, let's let's go with this. I will save this now and yeah, it's not transparent. it's white. Cool. Actually I, I, I like this kind of it looks a bit like a 70s wallpaper in a sense. Probably needs different colors, but yeah, there we go. Um, Lady Mr. Leaf also writes in the chat again. Sorry for for neglecting the chat. My last LD, I collaborated with uh, Lilo Cormick and Joshua McLean, so I didn't have uh, to touch Unity. <laughs> Thinking of learning poor JavaScript since I'm always drawn to it. Uh, JavaScript, um, a lot of people hate on JavaScript, and mm, to some extent, I can understand why. But recently, for work, I had programmed a lot with JavaScript for a script in After Effects. So the After Effects scripting language is JavaScript. And some things are pretty are pretty weird in a sense, especially in terms of scoping. But once you wrap your head around it, it's, it's quite a fun programming language. And I can really see how many people started out with JavaScript because it, it's fun. It's fun. It's, it's like coming back to, to quick basic. And you, you really got very, very quickly some, some uh, nice uh, well, it's not nice programs, but um, you make uh, uh, you can get with just a few lines pretty powerful results in a sense, which which I very much enjoy. Okay, so let's bring this over to Photoshop and see what we can do because we probably have to do something. Place embedded or place linked? You know what? Let's embed and HL dot one two three. Four five five one. Apparently, I'm, I'm sorry for spelling your uh, name completely wrong. Wanna become famous by followers, primes, and views on? Oh my God! Yeah, this is. This appears to be some sort of spam, but um, you know what? I will try to add, gift a sub. <laughs> no, I, I think someone probably. I, I, I think this is spam because I'm not interested in buying followers. Thank you very much. So um, yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe I will ban you. I'm really sorry, but there we go. Well, I'm not really sorry. This this was an outright lie that I'm sorry for banning someone who's <laughs> spamming. But hey, uh, I think this lends my channel some kind of legitimacy <laughs> that I'm already big enough to be spammed. Uh, okay, so let's bring in now what we just did in Illustrator. So setups we have X, game, uh, strategy, game, mockup. There we go. Hexagon grid, bounding box, um, page, yes, oh good. So let's go with this size and then again I just duplicate it here in case things go horribly wrong. Cool. Okay, so now I want to give it this uh, perspective a slant there. And for that I can try to turn it into a 3D layer. Create 3D layer from file. No, I want 3D. 
spherical panorama, new 3D extrusion, new mesh from layer. Postcard or cylinder donut head pyramid, my god. Um, Photoshop 3D again is, is like my last resort or when I'm very lazy and I don't want to go to After Effects or even Maya to get proper 3D but yeah for now I think it should work fine. So I think a postcard is what I want which is just a billboard. So yeah. you are about to create a 3D layer. Would you like to switch uh, to the 3D workspace? Okay and now all my layers are gone. Wonderful. <laughs> Red Hermit says, that design reminds me of this awesome logo I've seen for the Murimoto Moon Colony. Ah, oh, and, and already uh, uh, posting an, uh, a link there. <laughs> yes, uh, this Murimoto Moon Colony uh, thing here. I already had it uh, for myself uh, printed out. Um, so essentially this, I didn't really come up with this, but now that you say it, it really looks a lot like it. <laughs> Uh, the original design is, of course, um, for those who really know, the Morimoto Mars Colony. Morimoto Mars Colony from the Journeyman Project game, which is, uh, I think, one of my first CD adventure games that I had, which came with my first CD ROM drive, which was a double speed CD ROM drive around 94, 95. So it was one of those very first games. And the Mars Colony already had a logo and it looked yeah, it looked like this. So essentially I just stole it and uh, one person uh, told me that uh, the the uh, kanji that I used there uh, said, uh, or even still said Mars. So I just changed it to Moon Colony. But why would I come up with this? And this goes back to my very first steps with Unity where I started making a moon rover simulator game. And uh, I think maybe maybe this is still around. Let me just see it if I can find it on mod db pixel prophecy. Um, because uh, like I said, for, for this moon thing, I also wanted to have uh, different kinds of space agencies from different countries. And one would be uh, also, they would also have their individual programs there, uh, not just programs or uh, yeah. Um, uh, what's it called? Not companies. Uh, yeah, the company, different uh, private uh, private companies would have also their logos there. Sea of Tranquility. This is what I would have called it. So let's try this again. My internet for some reason is very slow. As slow as my double speed CD-ROM drive, as Red Hermit points out, your rendition is a great of the logo. Oh, thank you so much. It's it's stolen. It's 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 really not that, that much of a rendition. But I I liked, for some reason, I really liked this logo so much. It, it has this very sleek and, and, and uh, nice appeal that I, yeah, I got it even for myself on, on, uh, on the hardcover uh, notebook just because I, I like the logo. It, it looks so slick. So this is, of course, you steal only from the good ones. So apparently I got a Cloudflare error because something between Frankfurt and the ModDB host uh, has problems. Anyway, this is just a quick test of this moon game of how it would have looked like. And look, even my very first game maker game, Luftwiderstand. Wonderful what you can all find by googling your name. So yeah, now I really can see it, how closely it looks uh, to, to, to the logo. Okay, so I want to give uh, to, to just yeah, s slightly rotate it into the distance. Uh, Photoshop 3D, how the hell do I do this? Properties. So I got something here. Um, there I get down here, I got camera controls. So the question is, should we do we want to uh, rotate the camera or leave the camera as it is and only rotate the card, which I think is preferable. So let me find 3D print set. Oh my God, 3D print, I don't need to print this. Scene. Uh, are we in theater, stage productions, and scene? Okay, let's let's try try it differently. 3D. Okay, so there is much more to be found here. 3D, a circle panorama, paint system. I mean, for one thing, I have to give uh, Adobe credit. There is a lot uh, that you can do with Photoshop 3D, but then again, 
why bother <laughs> especially if you got uh, things like cinema 4d which is for motion graphics or for people who are not that much into 3d uh, usually the stepping the first stepping stone and usually also the last because cinema uh, 4d is pretty uh, versatile or you go to blender and blender since the last time i looked at blender it's it's just amazing of, of all the things that you can do with blender it's it really developed from something small and crummy to something that's actually a uh, uh, a viable alternative to, to the likes of Maya. So, but what do I want? New mesh from Leia and I want to maybe a window 3D. Yeah, I got the 3D window, which is good. Is this the 3D window? It's probably not. Where is the 3D window? Oh, it's down there. This, okay, good. This I can work with. There is the mesh. So I can probably, when I select the mesh here, I can probably rotate it oh please come on photoshop photoshop 3d what are you what do you want of me <laughs> hexagons double click what if i double click it okay so now i can rotate it which is wonderful so this is exactly how i want it not because i want to type in just some values and not weirdly rotate it here and hope that it aligns roughly with how I want it to look. Okay, so <laughs> my phone stopped itself in its tracks from essentially <laughs> getting two notifications at once. Wonderful! Ah, oh my god, Photoshop 3D layer, this is not fun. This is really not fun. You know what, maybe we should do this uh, in After Effects because I think I will be animating it in After Effects anyway and uh, the only thing why I want to avoid doing this in After Effects is I really like this uh, when we look at uh, where is my workspace from before Phil Wacom what I like about uh, this one here is uh, this uh, orthog orthogonal projection so it's, it's not perspective but it's yeah it's it has no perspective and you can't do this in after effects the only workaround is to use a camera with a very very tele lens so like like you go like it's 20000 millimeter lens or something so that it looks like orthogonal and the problem of course is when you have a lens like this uh, even the slightest change to rotation just yeah moves the camera out of bounds it's it's very hard to to wrangle so this is why i didn't want to do this and the other thing is of course i could do this in maya or you know what i just realized uh even illustrator has a 3d space here but it's i haven't I haven't worked with this one usually when i uh, activate this weird 3d thing here um, the most important thing to me is this x here otherwise it, it stays open so if you ever accidentally click this uh, perspective grid tool here and then you change to, to other tools and you can't get rid of it find this little thing here select uh, this button here yeah and find this little x there and when you click it then also this grid will go away come on there we go it's really it's like it doesn't want to be clicked um no this is wrong there is photoshop there is photoshop good okay uh, by the way I, again i neglected the chat because here in my stream manager for some reason i still have uh, this uh, chat bot uh, this whatever it was open that was trying to sell me <laughs> subscribers um I was just uh, right home and said I, I was just thinking I would go straight to Photoshop and skew perspective in the layer but this looks much better yeah this usually what I would do but I want to do things right for once and I might be doing this in Maya but then I get no you know what let's let's just keep the grid in there but uh, like so and then we'll do this in After Effects so essentially I'm just building my individual assets and then we'll do the animation in After Effects so at least that's the plan so what do we have for us now um, we have the background and this tile grid and probably I will need to change some colors of the tiles like I said maybe I want to have uh, some tiles that are uh, grouped together by a certain color or so like you would see with strategy games but I think I will do this all in After Effects so this is a bit problematic now because we really need to envision how things would look like in perspective so I yeah I'm, 
I'm really going to take this uh, alignment of the grid here as my reference. So I'll just keep this here. Um, because like I said, I want to draw the other assets that I need. Paste, paste. I, there we go, copy and paste from this layer. So something like this. Yeah, maybe, maybe a bit more oblique. Like so. Yeah, this, this probably could work. Okay, finally, let's let's get cracking and draw something. Ah, you know what? I like I said, I really it's it's really hard to envision how things would look like, especially if you don't have your bottom line grid there. So let's I make a new After Effects composition where I place the layer and just tilt it how I want it to be, and then take a screenshot of that and work of this in Photoshop. So it's the classic back and forth. The unicorns would be proud. You can really see how hard it is for me to get started with something because I want to uh, need to plan it out beforehand what I want to do. Okay, the cool let's save this. The cool thing about After Effects and Photoshop is you can import Photoshop files as After Effects compositions, which means it retains all the layer names and layer sizes and, and layer effects. So it's it's really uh, fun uh, to yeah just start uh, animating things and even if it's just for a parallax uh, uh, movement. So file import. Why am I doing this with a stylus? <laughs> Okay, it's strategy game mockup image sources and just have to say import as composition and I like to retain the later sizes sequence options yeah and import and it says yeah I don't I don't need ed editable layer styles so this is good and yeah now I got here my Photoshop composition in After Effects with all the layers that you have here and even. I hope even this hexagon grid layer. Where, where is it? Did it just crash? No. Wonderful. That's the hexagon grid. Okay, cool. So I turn it into a 3D layer, like so, and nothing much changed. But now I got uh, additional controls here in rotation for not just uh, one rotation, but for each axis I got uh, rotation controls. So let's um, take it like this and no. And like so, it looks already kind of neat. Uh, again, the only thing that I don't like is this pronounced perspective there. So you know what? I undo this now because when you don't create a camera, uh, After Effects will just assume that the viewport as you see it is a camera but you can't change anything there so i need to create a new camera and like i said i will set the focal length to like 5000 millimeters um, the cool thing is uh, when you create something uh, as a like a camera and then turn everything to 3d layers everything is like as you would see through the camera so it's not like you're already already zoomed into two pixels or something no it's just uh, yeah aligned essentially to this camera so now if I turn it it looks almost orthogonal and this is good so 45 degrees there and 45 degrees on this axis no not 45 complete rotations like this. Okay, you know what? This is much less painful than the Photoshop, than the Photoshop uh, uh, 3D space. So I'm, I mean, right now it's it's we're actually we're not seeing the up uh, upper side, but the underside of it. But again, uh, it doesn't really matter. So um, just looking at 35 degrees, just trying to find a nice angle here. What's this shape called? Is it a lozenge or, or something? How you pronounce it? Um, I'm never quite sure, and this is why I avoid using this shape so that I don't have to um, use the English name, which I'm not 100% sure of <laughs> how it's pronounced. So you know what? I, I actually I really like this how it looks, like this. So let me just check what the uh, composition size is. Yeah, and also here it's UHD, which is good, and I can. 
essentially I can just bake this layer which means I just export this one as a PNG and then use it in my um, in my Photoshop uh, file there as, as just another layer without having to worry about 3D or anything. The downside to this is before I do this, let me think if I need to change the colors of some, yeah, I probably would have to have it uh, to, to mask it out or select it some, somehow anyway. So if I do it when I still have it uh, straight on or if I already have it in perspective, it doesn't really matter. So um, let's export composition, save frame as Photoshop layers. And then I put it just here and call it. Um, Hexa grid. And let's see what After Effects has done. Lady Miss Leaf says, I think some people have a tendency to just call it diamond. Oh yeah, diamond. This this makes it much easier. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Red Hermit says, I was googling auth orthographic for Photoshop 3D. It says you can switch the camera to that uh, few, I think. Yeah, in Photoshop you can, but not in After Effects, as far as I know. Can't find of a good menu selection image of how yet. Yeah, yeah uh, Los it's Los Angeles, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, Los Angeles <laughs> shape. Uh, thanks, Lady Miss Lip. I will go with diamond. I'm, I'm more sure with diamond because diamonds are forever. Too late though, looks like you uh, did it with After Effects just fine. Yes, thank you, thank you for, for the effort. Sometimes it's, it's the workaround is faster than uh, trying to, to find or to learn how to do it the right way. And this is why some people are still, uh, I don't know, using Flash before it was acquired by Adobe where it was Macromedia Flash because they know how to get things done there and uh, it would take them longer to learn a new <laughs> tool, for example. Yeah, this is just a discussion that we had before. Okay, so um, where, where is my... Where is my hexagrid? Of course, I put it in the wrong folder, as always. Image sources, hexagrid. So this is now from After Effects and it even exported all the other layers that I had in there, but I have no need for them. I only need my little hexagrid. So I will just save this now and just copy paste the grid. Beautiful. Yeah, this I can I can work with this. Or maybe do I need we want it like this, that it's even flatter. Maybe a bit, yeah, maybe we will find out. I mean, it, it looks nice, it looks nice. Where is my stylus? There it is. Red Hermit says, yes, good old Macromedia. I learned so much, uh, a good action script back in the day. Uh, when I had the first idea to, uh, to really get into object-oriented programming, I found this tutorial where they tell you how to use action script actually and this was just I don't know a couple of months before uh, Adobe said um, that they will put uh, <laughs> essentially flesh out on the green pastures somewhere on the farm to the north so essentially I thought oh my god maybe maybe it's a good thing that I just was dragging my feet and not really <laughs> getting along or getting on with the tutorial uh, because it was a dead language in a sense but action script I did a little bit of action script and also it, it's like a bit like JavaScript. It's surprisingly um, versatile. Uh, the Ink Skeleton says, Hey Phil, I've been here since the beginning, uh, but I was chatting with friends and I'm gonna code with you all. Sounds fun. Yeah, I'm happy coding and uh, again, if I'm talking too too loudly or or too irritatingly, just put me on mute. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so let's um, let's draw something then. Finally, <laughs> I mean, we're one hour in and I didn't draw a single stroke. All I did was this hexagon grid there. Okay, maybe maybe this uh, grid is a bit too bright for me, at least so that I know what I'll be doing. But it, like I said, it just has to look like a strategy game. So let's draw some kind of player shape then. Um, maybe let's draw them on somewhere on here. Yeah, right now, if you haven't uh, uh, noticed it, I'm just sketching that it looks like a piece there or maybe, maybe here. And then I have 
couple of things here for the cityscape. So just that I know where to put things. And then the monster, the big bad monster. And this monster will probably use up many uh, uh, tiles, like one, two, three. You know what? It's a monster that uses up five hexagrids there. So what does the monster look like? It looks like this. Spooky. So, but how would I draw it from the outside? <laughs> Or at least from 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 this view, it's it's a bit uh, uh, problematic. But yeah, you know what? Essentially, it's just a cylinder. So I will go with some kind of cylinder. Then I mean, it's the monster needs to be a bit smaller and the player a bit uh, bigger to be readable or legible. Okay, let's try again here. And so it's got this kind of I went with this kind of cobra-like head. So maybe this is a bit too thick. Hmm, let's let's try again. So what what does this head look like from from this perspective? Really, I'm <laughs> I'm not a good artist, so um, yeah. I just put this one here as my reference. Hopefully this helps me a bit. And but I think I painted on some light rims for the um, lightning so maybe this helps me or would help me but uh, I don't quite see it maybe it's just too dark here let's brighten this up yeah not not really not quite sure where things are but it just has to roughly look like this one so again, let's let's try it like this for the monster. Good. So there should be the eyes, and there is maybe the mouth. Uh, my biggest problem is that <laughs> I, or my biggest fear is uh, fear that it looks too cute, that it will turn out too cute. But maybe there with those fangs, they aren't fangs, but I'm not quite sure what those are called. Pincers? No. Um, yeah, I, I think something, something along those lines there. Uh, I need to draw in the eyes, otherwise I really can't, can't tell. It looks like some kind of Final Fantasy baddy. You know, not not the real big bad ones, but the more goofy ones, like like this one cactus that, that's running around. So, uh, yeah, maybe maybe like this. I think this would this could work. Uh, Mandibles, Lady Miss Leaf says, thank you, wonderful. Where were you all with when I was having my English tests <laughs> at school and couldn't uh, uh, think of all of all those uh, wonderful words. This is why I always say wonderful. Other people say tremendous to sound smart when they don't know a word. But this is just fine. Maybe it's a bit too too thick here. Maybe it's now it's a bit too thin. <laughs> um, it has some kind of Final Fantasy tactics vibe for some reason. I, I don't know. But I mean, if you see this thing here, uh, this one here and then uh, a couple of seconds later you see this mock up here you probably uh, can uh, at least it, it should look uh, well related in a sense okay so um Ray Thomas says yeah a uh, cactuar oh cactuar this is what it's called in english in german it's cactuar which is also fun because uh, cack means <laughs> a, a crap or shit <laughs> i mean with the ck but uh, yeah we all we were uh, uh, not too old back then and it was just a source of constant uh, amusement <laughs> so let's do these mandibles then 
again um, for those who are interested about which brushes I use uh, usually I get here what I call Phil's pencil and Phil's detailed brush and uh, those are usually my go-to brushes because um, I, 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 if if they are too too fine, then I lose myself in detail. So this is why they have this very yeah ragged outline. So I'm just trying to yeah maybe maybe something like this. This could work. It's got a nice outline. It looks it looks a bit menacing. I hope, and it looks like a strategy game in a sense i would i would hope okay then um let's um i think this is essentially it so let's just check here the composition of the entire thing here so maybe i can move this down and yeah maybe they are a bit well, not too big, but maybe I should have them like this, that they are extending forward, or I can use them, maybe give them their individual um, tiles from which they start. Now this also looks, it looks a bit weird. And if I have it like this, it also looks weird. No, no, it, I, will, I will go with, it comes from this strange monster here. And this one goes forward and for silhouette purposes this one will go here the other round it looks like a scythe is a scythe uh, yeah yeah i think i think this could work so um, now it's just making things pretty okay for one thing um, i need to clean up here the outline on the monster again for me it's just important that the monster looks somewhat monstrous <laughs> and not too cute so I think this is good well it's not it doesn't extend that far but this is okay so I use my fills detail brush which also has a ragged outline if I zoom in but it's not as ragged as my other brush and so yeah I, I just go from the very coarse outline and then move in and yeah just clean up most of the edges and because uh, like I said I'm not that much that good of an artist and when I have a rough outline it hides some of my inconsistencies or where I'm not very doing a very good job at, at staying uh, at drawing straight lines and so on but uh, yeah if the outline is ragged it could has as intention in one hand and which is more important even sometimes it changes the outline because you're especially if you're drawing very small or yeah at the, from at the thumbnail size essentially and uh, then you start imagining details where there are none and suddenly it's it's a cool interesting tool to get your imagination a little bit uh, going so Okay, so those were these things here and now I clean up this shape here. And then of course I will add all the typical game stuff like maybe there's a ring down there or all the uh, uh, tiles the entity is on is somehow um, illuminated or has some other kind of highlighting and so on and so forth. Uh, Red Hermit says, looks like it's saying, come give me a big hug. Oh dear, no. Does it look too cute? It looks too cute. Maybe... Hmm, maybe a little bit. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah, you know what? I will, I will finish here the outlines and then see, see what I can do. <laughs> okay. Um, maybe I want to animate this, like I said, in After Effects, like it will... It, like it is actually in in the game or something so maybe i want really to separate what's going on on the layer because right now i was on the wrong layer and then started drawing here details and now this part here is part of uh, the entity the the hull the torso or whatever you want to call it 
Okay, so this looks good, I think. Give it also this kind of strange thing that's, yeah, that it's not entirely smooth there. And maybe I will also draw in some of those nasty hairs, like like spider hairs. It's, it's really, ugh, just gives me, <laughs> gives me all the, the cringies. Okay, so those are the mandibles. And here's my ugly smoke monster. Does it come out like this or does it somehow has weird tentacles? You know what, I will go with weird tentacles because I'm a fan of Lovecraft and this guy was afraid of pretty much anything that didn't look exactly like him. And if something looked exactly like him, he would also probably been uh, completely scared. Uh, Pixel Prophecies, uh, read up for more input. Oh, good. Um, Lady Mislip says, I actually disagree. I find it easier to see the sharpness of the scythes when pointed outwards. It just doesn't match the picture. True, it would overlap with the body in the view going inwards. Yeah, maybe I can, if both uh, of those mandibles are pointing forward, maybe, maybe I can, uh, uh, Let's just try it. Maybe I can make it work uh, with some clever shading and highlights. Uh, image uh, layer, no, it's edit, transform. Where is transform? There we go. Rotate, flip horizontal. So mm, maybe like this. Maybe like this it could work. Yeah, I think. Let's do it. Yeah, let's, let's try it like this. Got its little arms here. Yeah, it's it's well maybe it's a bit it's a little bit cute. And then I will try to separate um, them from yeah from the torso. Yeah, this is another artist problem. You want a readable, a legible silhouette, but you also want to give a certain impression. And in the end, yeah, it's just it's all about problem solving. So yeah, it looks a bit like the roots of a tree now. And now here it's inside this one. Yeah, but, but I think this is okay. This doesn't have to be a city tile. Cool. So. Maybe it's, maybe I'm, I'm too defined on this side here because I like it if it looks like, you know what I could do uh, it that it looks like it's coming out. We don't really see where it comes out from because it's going to be some kind of black fog, black smoke there. Uh, it's always the same with, with my monsters. There's some kind of nebulous and huge and looming and there's always lightning somewhere in there. So, okay, let's, let's get um, the outline here going. And as for the eyes, they have, of course, a different color here. But I think I changed the color of the eyes anyway in After Effects, so maybe I just want to keep them also on a separate layer there so that I can change it on the fly as I need it. So let's just pick EGA green, which is this beautiful tone here. Yeah, this looks, at least it looks some kind of monstrous, which is good. Maybe the eyes, of course, are a bit too friendly. Oh uh, my god. <laughs> the biggest problem that I had in the beginning was when I did this other concept drawing, I keep kept drawing eyes into it and look at this it looks more like uh, how to train your dragon <laughs> than, than some uh, weird entity so this is why I left the eyes as they are. Uh, Lady Misleaf writes uh, stretch the arm out more to give space for the scythe uh, to show 
to show inwards more directly pointed down. Um, you know what? I will try to give uh, this one here some kind of aura or just some glow, so that uh, the scythe that's in fr scythe that's in front um, probably just. Uh, a yeah, is more legible against this background here. So for now, I'm not worried about this, but I will be in a couple of minutes probably when I feel like I'm I'm done with this one here. What, uh, of course, I have been drawing the eyes and also on the other layer. Okay, but not too much. This is good. This is good. So for now, let's let's. Uh, I will just uh, try to to spend uh, uh, some time there on this weird fog thing here, the ground fog. So we'll use a charcoal brush. And maybe I can use uh, also the fog here, maybe because if it's not black, but some other color, maybe I can use this to my advantage. So, you know what, let's, let's, let's just try this. Um, I give this a different tone. And of course it's <laughs> it's on the wrong layer as always. And yeah, this already helps a little bit. Of course I need to work in those little arms then, but I think this yeah this actually helps uh, sorry if we are giving you too much input no no it's 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 really good this is uh, this is really what i like about those streams because you're constantly when you're working alone uh, trying to have uh, uh, this dialogue with yourself but sometimes it, it drives you crazy because you can't be sure about something and it's good to have uh, an outside party <laughs> looking at things and giving feedback so uh, this is not what i wanted to delete So, yeah, it still got somehow cute arms. I have to admit this. But um, yeah, the other thing that I wanted to try, um, regardless of this of this uh, fog here, you know what? Let's let's name names here, especially uh, for the layers. Um, I call this just arms. And what is this? Fog or smoke? And we get here torso. And safe. Red Hermit had the same uh, thought. Don't want to interrupt your creative pro. No, no, it's it's a, it's a dialogue that's going on. So no worries. It's really the the more input I got. I mean, uh, I in the end I also decide which route I go. But it's good to see uh, or hear other input of things that I probably just would have forgotten to or that wouldn't have occurred to me. So this is why teamwork is usually good, because uh, in the end someone <laughs> has to make a decision, but it's good if you get just more options to work with. So, okay, so there are the arms. Because the other thing that I wanted to, to try uh, to give it um, yeah, a bit more um, character is uh, to have it, like I said, some, some sort of reflections that you would see it. And maybe the sky, this is a very like uh, a carapace kind of uh, uh, yeah, material there. And maybe the sky is being reflected uh, at, at the edges, kind of a Fresnel uh, fashion there. And again, this is very just just trying things out. Let's deactivate the fog there. But maybe in conjunction together with the fog, maybe this could work. I mean, this looks ugly now. <laughs> um, I need a different, I need a different brush. So that's the layer I want to work on. And uh, no, I pick, no, I want to pick the color. Uh, of course, I'm having my uh, eraser there. Okay, so the brush that I want is Phil's Detail Brush. And let's try something like this. Oh God, my, I'm not really, uh, not good at, at drawing those kind of curved lines. 
something like this. Let's try it also here. I don't know how I would do drawing a digital drawing if there wasn't the control Z key. <laughs> It's probably it's too much what I'm drawing here now, but just so that I can spot for myself where I need those highlights and where I can go without them. Um, the reason why I like to draw all those shadowy uh, things is uh, I like to not draw what I can't draw. So this is why everything is very dark with me, so that only you see what I'm able to, to draw. <laughs> and Mr. Julius is also here. Hello! And it, uh, it says, hey unicorn, so I have to drink. Cheers! Um, Lady Mistleaf also writes, just add Thin uh, the left arm a little and add a small layer of smoke on the inner arm for perspective. Yeah, of course, um, this part here needs, needs, of course, more smoke that it really reads like um, this one is coming out of the smoke then. So I think together with my weird highlights there and with the smoke, I think I could make this work. So it's, it's a combination of efforts, essentially. <laughs> So I probably won't need this one. It would have been much easier if I had as decided upon a light source, essentially. So now, I mean, since we got here, those weird highlights on this side, so the light source must be coming somewhere from the front, so you wouldn't see this here. Uh, uh. Yeah, this is not how highlights work. <laughs> but I think I can get away with it because it's 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 not realism, it's more of a yeah, cartoony rendition of a big bad monster. So uh, yeah, always the duality of painting something and then immediately deleting 99% of it and then just trying again and again and deleting everything this is the razor now and starting starting from the top oh. or maybe what would also help is um, if I give the entire thing an outline it's probably too much I mean it should remain this this shadowy thing there okay so this smoke again I'm um, um, or the fog or what I called it. I'm not quite enjoying how the color actually looks because it's gray now and everything else that's in the shadows is some kind of this, this bluish purple. So let me try and adjust at least for that. Green, blue, there we go. Okay, now since it's not gray anymore, it's much easier for me to just use the hue and saturation and to, to change um, the appearance of this smoke. Lightness, yeah. Um, not, not touching the lightness, but the saturation. Mm, something like this, perhaps. Yeah, I, I think this, this could work. I think this could work. Um, well, I could be a little bit chaotic. I'm sick, so I had to uh, continue long Polish tradition of drinking vodka with pepper to get well. Oh my God, this is a, this is really it's a Polish tradition. My mom uh, swears on drinking, often uh, heating up whiskey, and taking it with the same amount with hot water when she feels like an, a flu coming on. So uh, I'm not a doctor, but also I'm not trying it. <laughs> okay, so for the smoke, I got also here my, my brush that I call Salty Fill, or no, it's it feels salt. It's like, yeah, with a salt pitcher. Um, 
that's um, if you if you can't tell it I, I zoom in a little bit so this is what this brush does which I enjoy very much for just making something dirty or greasy it's just giving it a, a hint of salt and I think this also would work here for for this for this entity okay so but but let's address here that these arms need to peel themselves somehow out of this fog maybe the fog is a bit too strong so I just diminish it a bit well not too much it still needs to be legible uh, yeah maybe like this yeah we will come back to it should should we should we need okay so the arms let's save <laughs> in the meantime oh by the way I'm always uh, drawing at 16 bits there we go 16 bits per pixel um, because especially when you doing a lot of blurring or very smooth um, gradients or something um, it's uh, you need the additional precision and thankfully with my uh, amazing thread ripper I think my computer is able to take it even there in, in UHD resolution okay um, so the arms how to have them peel themselves out of this fog I just create a new mask for the arms and then just um, use my salt here on the mask and it looks okay but of course now it's <laughs> it's it gets transparent <laughs> that I don't want especially here for the foreground and now I need the rest of the smoke there or the fog this is not the fog brush that I used before I think I used the charcoal for it mm, it still needs to be a bit more smoky and black in some instances I'm always uh, when I'm drawing something I always look at my navigator um, because th this thing here where I can just set yeah where you want to uh, which portion of the of the uh, canvas you want to see because here I always have the entire uh, picture at a glance uh, and as always if you can read or discern what's important at a very small uh, size then then you're good then you're good oh mr. Julius says I can't say I didn't like it <laughs> and retirement says my Polish godmother used to do that uh, always added a spoon of honey to <laughs> So yeah, it's it's strong, strong liquor and sweetness. I think this is this is how you how you get uh, uh, people to to drink it. Otherwise, it probably tastes like a window cleaner. Okay, so um, still not convinced that uh, the, the, this fog thing is working for the arms. You know what? I will draw it on top. So um, disable. Yeah, this was the mask. I don't need it. Right click disable layer mask and I will just draw here the smoke on top I don't think that's how you do it but if I if I'm like this I think I can make it work and you know what it kind of works I'm actually surprised how how good actually this this works yeah so do we need more smoke here on the bottom so maybe it's not like these tree roots where this thing is coming out but it's coming out of just gray smoke you know what let's let's try this where is my torso i would just use also a very soft eraser like the charcoal so that it's not very clear where this thing ends and the smoke starts you know what i think i like it i think i like it fog is here so let me get the only problem that I have now that I got here fog on top and and in the back but I think this could work I think this could work also like I said with this highlight here that's painted on this is good and you know what let's add some more of those highlights should have saved the color yeah. and I will add some more highlights there on the torso so I just made a mask that I can't draw outside of my selection but apparently I even can't draw inside oh, of course I probably have a wrong color selected 
There we go. Yeah, this is probably a little too subtle. Let's go with my, where is it, fills detail brush and just scale it up. So yeah, you can see I can't draw outside, which is helpful. So and I also try to, why didn't it select things there? That's the color I want, okay. So I would just try to give it some sort of definition here. Again, since uh, I'm not quite sure what I'm doing, <laughs> I just draw a lot and then with a soft eraser brush probably delete most of it. And what keeps sticking around and still looks kind of okay, that's, that's what I keep. So let's assume here is a light source in the back that's casting here something. So this, this is kind of cool actually. And here the other light source here on the front, but it's a bit softer or not as strong. So I change my brush size a bit, diminish it and have it like this. So yeah, like I said, that it looks like some kind of, of carapace, smooth and, and shiny surface there. You don't need much with highlights. Usually I, I, I overdo it many times. So I have to really restrain myself. This arch here on, on the eye, this is also something here. This is why, why I'm trying to, to, to give it some, to pronounce it here a bit more. So, yeah. I would like to say you can see me go back and forth, but it's, it's forth and back, 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 and then maybe a little bit further forth and then again. But you know what? Look at this. It kind of works. I have to say it kind of works. Um, Mr. Julius says that looks like a warm hat. <laughs> yeah, actually, it, it's true. It doesn't look so much like like uh, it's the dome of whatever uh, uh, head this thing has. <laughs> you know what? I'm 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 okay with that. But uh, with those uh, arm things here, where are those again? On which layer? I mean, I named the layers, so I should actually know. But <laughs> um, fog eyes arm. Okay, yeah, of course it's named. So I just use this selection also. And on my highlights layer, just call them highlights. I also use it here to try to give it even further of an outline on this size. Again, like there is some light coming from behind. And maybe it's too much or not even necessary. But just to give it some sort of, yeah, um, that it's not just this, this big black blob <laughs> that's really hard uh, uh, where you can to, to tell which is part of its shape and what is just background or something. So maybe also here. Or that's maybe that's a bit too much. Maybe just here spot highlight. And just to try things out I will make it even brighter like this which I think is beneficial to it maybe it's a bit too much now but it really helps to to get yeah the shape essentially right Herman says uh, looking good <laughs> so I think I will mostly leave it at that uh, for some reason is it, it looks like uh, this uh, what's it its left arm is extended a bit further forward than the right one but you know what, I, I think it almost gives it some kind of dynamic pose <laughs> in a sense. So yeah, I think, I think this is good. Save and make the edge around the eyes a bit sharper. Like this. 
Again, I have to be very careful not to change the actual shape or impression of the shape. So maybe I, this can go even a bit more elongated in a sense. Yeah, this makes it that it looks a bit more vicious even. But yeah, perspective really, <laughs> it kills you. <laughs> and Mr. Julius has subscribed. Thank you so much for your subscription. Thank you. Now I really need to step up my art game then if people sub subscribe to watching me just flail <laughs> around trying to, to draw something nice. Yeah, of course, uh, this big gaping tooth mouth is missing. And I had such a hard time. I really had such a hard time trying to, to paint those. I spent like half an hour just going teeth all over. And so this uh, set of teeth I stole. And I. this might be interesting to you of where I got this from. And uh, I think, what was it? Um, it was of a D&D &D card beholder, I think. I think this, yeah, from, from, from this Beholder artwork, I stole the teeth. Where is this Beholder artwork? Of course, it's the thumbnail probably, so I just go a few image. So yeah, if, for, for those who know, those are the teeth. I, I, I think, of course, I rotated them and changed the, the um, con contrast settings and so on, but this is the only way that I could get working, working teeth. Lady Miss Liv says, it's not flailing, it's learning and everyone starts uh, there at some point. Yeah, but most people grow. <laughs> I, I think uh, in my art I've plateaued at a certain level because I just don't don't have uh, the tenacity to just keep uh, practicing because I think, yeah, that's, that's good enough. It's just, just make it a little bit wobbly <laughs> and put a lens flare on it or something that I can cheat my way around getting better. So I call this teeth. And I will zoom out there and just... I mean, it still looks a bit cute, I have to say. So let's just try and see if this could work also if I draw them manually. Actually, <laughs> Actually, it kind of works. So, um, yeah, just where is my brush setting? There you go. Um, oh, of course, I'm drawing with black for some reason. This is not what I intended. So, I'm, I just try to make. Um, why are you ignoring my keyboard commands? Okay, now, now it works. Um, X, there we go. So I'm, I'm trying to make the teeth a bit more glisten. Make the teeth glisten more. That's, <laughs> that's what I want, wanted to say. Just, uh, yeah, um, hint at some more details. Because it's, it's going to be scaled down anyway. And those things will just be some some grayish pixels. But then, of course, uh, anyone who does pixel art knows, even if it's just a different shade of different color, it already could Im imply some sort of detail there. Red Hermit, wow, nailed it first try. Yeah, this is why I'm saving it and not touching it again, because uh, this was just beginner's luck, <laughs> in a sense. So I, I will just keep it at that. Okay, so this was, I think, the, the hardest part was just to get the monster more or less right. It looks kind of like this one, but not quite, but you can still see the similarities, so which is good for me. So um, those black dots here should uh, imply some sort of cityscape or some kind of obstacle. I mean, after all, this is uh, trying to be uh, a, a strategy game or tactics game. So um, yeah, we need to make those look like some sort of city blocks that are just repeated there. Maybe, maybe something like that. And then in the end, I will try uh, to paint this little token of, of someone holding as it is in this case, this heart here. Again, I'm not really good at drawing stuff, so everything needs to be swallowed by darkness. 
Lady Miss Leaf is going. Uh, good evening, but thank you for the stream. It was fun. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much for, for dropping by. Have a great evening and a great week. And again, thank you. <laughs> thank you for your participation and for your input. Okay, um, so uh, let's make this. I do, probably won't be needing this layer. Yeah, let, let, let's keep my sketch layer in there. Just call it sketch. Sketch. Or enter. And for this, uh, yeah, cityscape, again, it's just ruins or anything, so you, you really can't quite tell what it is. So I just make a brush that's more white like this and I will add the opacity or give it an opacity of 40 and then as essentially do just just as I did it there in my um, concept painting where I just yeah I, probably I shouldn't do to have have them overlap here because I will just copy and paste those like I said as if they are tiles in in a game so just different shapes there with some towers or spires or anything. But yeah, just that it it's, looks passable. I mean, uh, at this point it, it helps me that I'm trying to make a game uh, mock-up because now I can just draw four of them and repeat them throughout there. Okay, so um, where is my mock-up? This is the player mock-up and this are the city dots okay so those are gone and those will be my city ruins okay i just duplicate them and merge them together to get rid of this halfway transparency let's do it again and with my detail brush i keep yeah just just keep adding uh, details there but again since this is supposed to be on a game or something I can really make sure that everything here is confined uh, to to what's on the individual tile there um, yeah I make my brush a bit larger let's try here 17 is this too large no this is okay just for some kind of yeah what scaffolding or just broken bars of, of metal there and try to give each uh, of those a distinct shape in a sense. Maybe have here some debris lying next to it. Yeah, make make my brush even a bit larger that it's it's a bit faster for me. Uh, I don't like it that this is looks like it is. So yeah, I just. I want, of course, uh, to, to have them look uniform in a sense that they appear to be of the same um, the same thing, essentially, so that they are not too... that one is not standing out or from, from the others too much. Maybe like this. And then I think I just use a, another shade just to give it a bit more of depth or, or yeah, impression. Of, of depth because right now you can tell of from which angle you're looking at those ruins and um, so I just say I only want to work on their uh, pixels that they are visible and with this sky color I just add some more bits and pieces like this on top so I'm, I'm just again I'm, I'm just implying that this is being lit here from roughly the front of the sky so maybe this could not all only be just a city but also some weird rock formations or something so it's really hard to tell or is it too dark yeah make make it also I will also make it a bit brighter like this I think this is good and to stay in line with everything else that I did so far at least on the monster there was this implied harsh light coming from roughly the back the top so um, I will try to add this as well 
Oh. Okay, so I was just I wasn't sure whether I was drawing this on its uh, discrete layer, but apparently I wasn't. So yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um. Right. So uh, implied lighting from the back. I just pick this color here. And you know what? I will use this on my. No, I won't use this on my highlights folder because I will just copy and paste those things around. So. Let's go with this fine layer here. Just imply things like this here. I think this 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 could work. This looks okay. Not this part. Oh, I deleted it. Maybe not this part here. But yeah, it that it looks similar in in style to the others, but not too attention grabbing. So I'll just break up those big shapes here a bit further. Uh, I have a hard time drawing rock formations or anything like that, so you can see this is why I'm making good use of lights and mostly shadows again, just to cheat myself <laughs> around doing it properly or learning how to draw rocks, essentially. But yeah, I think I think this this looks good. This makes sense. Oh, I for, forgot this fourth one here. Let's get rid of it. <laughs> so um, yeah, and now I just copy paste those around and since I'm working here mostly on um, the orthog uh, orth orthographic orthogonal I'm not quite sure <laughs> what's the right term but since I can just copy and paste it around here I think I've I've nailed it essentially in in After Effects where things are so and of course we want to have this path here from the player towards the monster. Maybe we have here some in the back also. Some here on the sides. So again, it's it, I, I don't feel it's bad that it's a bit repetitive here. Maybe I shouldn't shouldn't combine them all. Mm, apparently I did <laughs> some some cases. So auto select layer. Maybe have it even like this, so that there is, is a bit more uh, something more at stake if there's a clear path from the player towards the monster. Yeah, I think I think this could be this could be nice. This I need to put in front, of course, and this one in the very front. I won't need. Can I put it somewhere else? Uh, yes, I can, but I need to. No, this was the background. There we go. Like I said, it looks awfully repetitive, but it works for this mock-up here. So what did I, did I just move? Okay, this one. And now I need to place this one differently. Okay. And But now it's in front of everything, so maybe I put it there yeah I think this would work okay so let's zoom out does this look to you like some kind of strategy game because I hope it does bump the microphone wonderful I group uh, all those uh, um, I'm not quite sure rock formations ruins <laughs> and uh, I will try to give them uh, I mean now they pretty much stand out uh, just like the player and this monster here so I maybe I change their color appearance a little bit that they aren't as contrasty um, hue saturation color balance yeah let's start with curves I make um, okay this is everything <laughs> um, there in this group 
this adjustment layer should only work in this group. So if, uh, this is also something that I found out uh, relatively late. Usually if you have uh, an adjustment layer, it affects everything that's underneath it. But sometimes you want an adjustment layer that only affects the, in the same group that it is. And usually groups are pass through. And you can see here what happens when I have this adjustment layer here. Well, it passes through to everything that's underneath. So you set this group instead of pass through to normal and then this adjustment layer only is applied to what's inside this group. So maybe this, this saves you some headaches. <laughs> Red Hermit says, yes, uh, it does look like a strategy game. Yes, they do seem to stand out too much, like you said. Yeah, exactly. So, um, if they have more of the appeal of the board they are standing on. So I'm, I'm just yeah trying to diminish a bit of their uh, contrast. And then, of course, their color. So I'm going here with a hue saturation as well. This is my saturate. Yeah, I can, I can even colorize them. So, if they look like this, for example, it still reads as some kind of obstacle, but uh, yeah, not as harsh as before. Uh, for comparison, this is how it looked like before, and this is now. So it's still yeah, it reads as an obstacle, but here um, it's clear that there is something between this black blob and this enemy there. Okay, so this black blob, that's the player. Oh my god, and I'm not quite sure how to tackle this, but um, maybe maybe if I stay in this stylized form here, let's put it there on top of everything, in this stylized form here and not try to make it too human-like, but more like a board game piece in a sense. I think this this could work because I'm terrible with humans not just drawing them in general interacting with humans it's just so hard <laughs> okay so maybe this is this little base where it stands on and yeah I can get rid of this also so this okay yeah let's let's keep the Oh, this was my eraser brush. Wonderful. Okay, so. Maybe like this. And then we have here the player character standing. This is the head. It's too big. <laughs> Maybe this is their head. They're standing there. But in what posture are they standing? Maybe they have some kind of this is usually the thing is uh, how to draw <laughs> uh, uh, or give an impression of scale in paintings or in concept art you always have this little person the wanderer with with some kind of stick there this is, has been a, some kind of running joke among concept artists i've noticed that there's always someone holding holding a stick somewhere in the painting just to give you a sense of scale for everything okay so hmm Maybe it, uh, we, we need to also view this person so roughly from behind like this. So now it looks not so much like holding a stick, but more like extending the hand, much like in this painting here, which is helpful and good. So now we only need to communicate that this is good, that this is the player. And maybe uh, this base here needs to go a bit in a different direction. Or maybe let's try it without this kind of base. But this is how I would draw feet, so <laughs> now you know why I wanted to have this this base here. I'm not quite sure what's it called, this this pedestal it stands on. Now it looks a bit like the Oscar the Academy Award. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not good with people, oh my god. Back again. Because I want also this uh, uh, person to be vague enough just so you, you know, yeah, this is a human, humanoid, uh, essentially, or maybe just like this. No, that's, that's probably too small there. Hmm. 
Hmm. This could work. Again, it looks a bit like the Oscar, but but who cares? If it's not golden, then I probably won't get sued. <laughs> hmm. Or should I find myself some reference of peoples from roughly standing like uh, two thirds occluded? Uh, I mean, this is really this is really a tough uh, perspective, especially if you're not used to drawing people. So okay, so those are the shoulders. This is good. This is the head. It's probably too big because I always draw heads too big. So head. Okay, head, shoulders. I get rid of the hand. Maybe this is some arm here. Okay, this looks too stiff. This is the back. Standing here. Does this look like a person? You know what? Maybe I can imply again some some lighting there and this might might help. So yeah, I will just try to draw this this thing again here. Oh yeah. <laughs> not too happy. <laughs> really not too happy with how this is turning out. Okay, yeah, I, I need to draw something on top of it, otherwise I really can't tell. Uh, no, wrong brush. There we go. So, just for the head maybe, or just the shoulders. This is the lighting from the back. Of course, now this one doesn't really stand out anymore. But as black silhouette, it does. Again, I, I'm really, I'm just, just trying things. Okay, where is my brush? There it is. Uh, this looks looks much worse than before. <laughs> actually, oh my god, yeah, I'm, I'm really not that good. Maybe just not as much, just here for the shoulders and maybe here. Could this be hair, perhaps? Or is the head just too big again? Implied arms here. Uh, uh, no. This is hard, this is hard, but hey, okay doesn't look too bad from afar at least so I just yeah I just keep going and try again to cheat my way around details I just add some lines and then see if they work and if they don't I get rid of them and draw lines somewhere else Okay, actually this this could work. I mean it looks like now it looks like a hooded figure, like this is part of the hood. So you know what? I've I've, I've seen worse of <laughs> my art. <laughs> art. Um, maybe if I just smudge everything together a little. I mean when you start smudging things together, you're at this point we're already a bit desperate. Ah, okay. And as always, just have a look at it at postage size, postage stamp size. Okay, so... Um, no, this, this needs to go here. There is the edge. And there's the other edge. Ah, God. Yes, if I mean if we're not looking too closely, <laughs> it could work. Red Hermit says it looks humanoid. Okay, this is good. And once a hand is extended with the heart, there will be no doubt that it is humanoid. Okay, right, the hand got it. 
the hand with the heart. So, okay, so we're looking from this side. Then the hand. <laughs> so where, which is the player? There, there is the player. Okay, good. Then extend the hand. Like this. Yeah, now it really looks like a hooded figure. But yeah, you're right. With the hand, now it works. It, it again, it looks a bit, a bit weird, from the perspective. But now it, it it could work. You know what? The only thing that we need now is this red glow. And the heart again. So. Like this um, layer overlay color overlay there we go blend mode normal and the color I want is RGB red that's good and yeah now for visual effects essentially I'm trying to give this glow or, or at least fake some sort of glow now it's behind everything so that we really know that maybe the player has some kind of this this red glow that it makes it easier to read oh yeah also also do it with the color overlay So that it's some kind of shader effect maybe where it's just this thing here glows and the enemy not. I mean of course this would look a bit weird. It's it's like yeah we, uh, this is highlighted for purposes that uh, aren't r really clear. Are they attacking or not or because red we always know that red must be bad in some way but in this case I just I just say yeah it makes it easier for us to read and now I, I imply some kind of yeah outline shader and of course I will rework the heart that it's a bit better to see this is another uh, of, of the advantages that when you scale it down to HD it won't look as crappy or sloppy as it is now instead it will look kind of decent like this. Okay, so the heart again. Um, need to make a bit more space around this, like so. And where is the heart? Uh, there it is. There it is. Since I'm using the color overlay layer, I mean, I won't change the color of the heart, so I just can bake it in. Make it in. Oh, Red Hermit reacted with 500 bits. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm actually relieved that it, it works. It kind of works how it looks like. So uh, yeah, the heart, just to make it even more easier to see, just give it maybe this, this white glow inside. Because again, I'm scaling this down, so I, I want it to be very obvious. Okay, it looks a bit like uh, like a Navi from <laughs> uh, from Zelda, but yeah, I, th I think this you know save save. Let's save this. I think this looks like a strategy game. I'm quite happy with it actually. So um, yeah, right. Um, the other thing that I want to make right now is gameplay related stuff. That is, I mean, this was just art. Well, just art. But next up, I will. Add some highlighting on certain uh, tiles. And for this, I take the the hard brush, this one here. So to make it really, uh, yeah, stand out, it's artificial in a sense. So I want to highlight, for example. Oh, you know what? Instead of doing it with brushes manually, I just pick here from my. A tile layer. So I just put this one in a bin of its own, just call it tiles. Make a backup copy. <laughs> we all know me by now, uh, I need backup copies. So uh, now I can do some highlighting here. For example, this one here. 
Yeah, now this looks, looks bad. <laughs> um, let's make it brighter. What is wrong here? Oh, the tile layer itself is only at 29%. So this is the actual brightness of this. Okay, so... Yeah, this changes things. <laughs> it looks horrible now, but uh, also very legible. Okay, good, good thing that I've looked at it. Red Hermit says, I like the concept image, how the glow of the heart is on the cheek of the person. Any chance you're carrying that into the humanoid? Oh, uh, in, in, from, from this reference here. You know what? Uh, since this looks like a hooded figure right now, um, I will leave this open for now but yeah uh, once i'm done with uh, doing um, the tiles um, i will get uh, get back to to the person and give them a bit more glow i think yeah i also like this 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 outline it has a nice touch to it and also also here it took me way too long to arrive at this implied outline and and yeah illumination so yeah i, I hope i hope i'm lucky again <laughs> so um oh yeah this was this layer here so um, I'm in this image there we go okay <laughs> um, so yeah let's first change the color or the appearance of the tile grid and for this I zoom out so I have the entire picture at once and yeah let's just start with curves Again, it, it should look like uh, it's meant uh, to be a game first and foremost. So if I make it darker like this, and turn down the saturation maybe a bit like so. So it really blends, everything blends together well. I mean, now this, this pronounced uh, uh, hexagon shape on each and every tile is a bit too much, I think, but I'm not going probably I wanted to say I'm not going back, but uh, I don't have to go back because I can just use a color overlay or over anything. Color overlay, there we go. Huh. Like this. Yes, and now I can just peel it back, essentially, well, I hope I can peel it back. Uh, I, I can't set a layer mask for layer effects, but I can just duplicate the layer on top without the overlay, like this, and make it a bit brighter, and uh, apply a color or layer mask. And now I can just reveal the layers that I want to have this kind of glow there or uh, this yeah, highlighting effect in one sense or another. Yeah, probably not with a brush. I think it's better if I do this with a lasso selection. Should I, oh, this was wrong. X, there we go. Because now if I change the color or the brightness or anything of this, um, Look at this, it almost looks like a game in a sense. And you know what, let's do the same here for the enemy. I don't know what it looks behind it actually, but yeah, neither will the player. Of course, as I said, it's, it's like this Murimoto moon colony thing, right? So, um, where's the monster? There's the fog, there's the eyes, teeth, torso. What's on layer seven? Oh yeah, the layer 7 I won't need anymore. And right here we are. So essentially I want those five tiles to be that we assume or not assume that we uh, pretend that this is an important part of the game. Bam, there we go. Wonderful, I think <laughs> it works, <laughs> it really works. Uh, maybe maybe make it darker or red or something, I'm not quite sure since now the player is red and I've established that red is good. But, um, you know, I, I mean, since this is on its own layer anyway, just copy and paste it and try just moving the hue a bit 
orange maybe I mean, I don't want it to be overly colorful because if you've watched my talk on on, on uh, yeah picking the right colors, it's always less is more. So uh, with as little different colors you can uh, uh, you can make it. Uh, just yeah, stay stay away from too many colors that all have certain meaning and so on. It it's, it makes something look gaudy quite quite easily. So if the color is the same thing as the eyes, it might work. I pull down the saturation a bit. Mm. I think it, it it could work that the color of the monster is the same as its eyes could be bad, could mean bad things. Okay, so here for the player then. Let's try to get rid of the hood and imply more of a face outline. Okay, so this is the player and this is... I got now three layers, right, first the red outline, then uh, the outline of just the silhouette and those highlights on top. So I gotta make sure that all, that this works for all. Okay, so how, how to get rid of this hood effect essentially, so I just, well, I just erase this top here. Mm, does this look like a face from roughly... Oh, my God. <laughs> so I'm already here in a problematic spot again. With just a few pixels, you, you actually tell so much and also it so much can go wrong. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, let's let's keep going. So the, those are the highlights still for the hood, which I won't keep. I mean, now it looks like some kind of cape this person is wearing. It's uh, okay with me. Okay, could this be the hair? And on your neck or around someone's neck. Uh, let's make it smaller. I don't know, this person looks a bit chubby, <laughs> at least from the face. Yeah, humanoid. Or maybe give here some more highlights. Like uh, there's a, a soft light coming from the top. But again, this could also be read as some kind of weird helmet. Oh my god, this is hard. Let's take out some and zoom out and see how it reads. And it reads uh, uh, not good. <laughs> okay, now I'm, I'm just trying to find where the, probably the ear would be. Okay, the, the eyes would be here. So around on this line there might be the ear and there might be the hair. To start, yeah, it's again, it's it's not a human, it's humanoid. <laughs> this is as good as it gets with me. Ah, oh, this is hard. Okay, so now for the red outline, I just delete pretty much everything of this and start anew. Otherwise, it would distract me with what I've had before, so I just call it Red Glow. And I even put this on top of the player because, of course, it needs to cast. It needs to be casted on, yeah, well, top of the player. So I can, whatever I draw, still got the color overlay on there. Um, hmm, hmm. Okay, bring out my finest brush with just four pixels and see. Again, I draw more lines than necessary and then we'll, we'll start removing them. Uh, 
Oh my god. <laughs> this, is, this is so hard. Okay, one pixel is a bit too small, probably. Yeah, this could potentially work. Maybe also here on the hair, where the hair parts. Uh, so, it's really, it's pixels, it's, <laughs> it's just pixels. I'm not quite sure what is going on with the hair, though. Um, maybe if I get rid of this a bit more. I'm trying to give here more of an outline of the face. This was the eraser. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, could this work? Uh, no. This looks uh, like the light is coming from the wrong side. Um, no, I, I need the eraser here. So the light is coming from there. So this is where the light source is. I'm, I'm struggling. I'm struggling. Ah, okay, maybe. Maybe this is going somewhere. It's really, it's just pixels. It's just a couple of pixels that change entirely how this looks. And as always, I have to check it from further away. Yeah, still looks chubby, still looks chubby and I don't know where the problem is, probably because of um, some pixels that look like it's someone's neck. So maybe I just use my small brush and change things up here. And back at the red glow. Sometimes, really, it's it's easier if you just start over when something is not working, and <laughs> and try again. I mean, this looks different now, but I'm not quite sure if it looks better now. Uh, yeah, Control Z 50 times <laughs> exactly. <laughs> bring back the hood. Can you put some red glow on the hood? I don't think that I can bring back the hood because um, instead of going Control Z, I just erased everything so uh, no I can't bring back the hood I think so I really have to but I could try to recreate the hood it will look differently but at least I could try And bring back the highlights. Oh, look at this. It almost looks like a hood again. Okay, maybe this wasn't this wasn't so bad after all. <laughs> Does this still look like a hood? Yeah, I need this, this thing where the player is standing on. Give it a bit more of an outline here. It's looking better though with your tweaking. Hey, at least, at least it's, it's looking, it's looking a bit better. <laughs> but uh, this is the thing. You, you never know. You really gotta try things. It's really hard. Also with my 
as job as a colorist, it's always uh, when, when clients say, yeah, I, I don't want to be rude, but is it okay if we try something else? Or what do you think would it look better if we make something more orange or so? And my reply to this is, It might not work, but you know what? Let's give it a try and find out together. Because in the end, sometimes it's it's really hard. I've been doing color grading for over 10 years now and many things are like, yeah, I'm not quite sure. We need to give it, really, we need to give it a try. Because sometimes things look pretty straightforward and easy and you tell your clients, yeah, this, I, I'll be doing this in one hour and you budget for one hour and then you realize after one hour, is is not working not at all as you've intended and then it ends up taking three hours but you already said it takes you one hour so yeah this is something that i've at least grown grown a bit cautious of over the years so at least i learned something okay so i like uh, that there's just this little bit of red here and not this uh, big big glow as it was before Maybe I can add some more red to everything. But again, with, with uh, strong light sources, because I like them so much, I tend to overdo them or just have their light be casted everywhere. So again, yeah, I, I want to be, be careful. Maybe this is, this is already sufficient there. And now I will give this uh, player here a white outline that it matches much better uh, the tile it's standing on. I think I think this would would go a long way. So yes, let's put everything in a bin, save it, <laughs> and I will add the outline. And for this, I will just take the standard hard brush and even have problems with that one. <laughs> yeah, this is a bit too thick here. Uh, why can't it be easy? Everything has to be hard. <laughs> But this is art and it also, it rhymes. So it has to be true. Yeah, I like it that it's not red, that it's white. Uh, it feel, well, it's not entirely white, it's, it's light gray, but I like this, this a lot better, to be frank. So does this look like a strategy game? I think it does. But the player is not perfectly centered on the tile. I think this looks a bit better. Again, it's it's not as intended, but could be could be worse. <laughs> cool. Okay, so um, let's put the finishing touches to it. One thing I'm still not sure about is the color at the monsters uh, 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 selection around here. I think this looks a bit better or you know what let's let's try going uh, negative without saturation maybe something like this so it's still um, highlighted in some way but uh, yeah well differently Yeah, even, even like this, even like this. Okay, so um, yeah, finishing touches and making things look prettier. Um, sound alerts uh, says retirement plate applause for 100 bits. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm relieved <laughs> at how it looks, looks right now. Okay, so uh, one thing is that I want to give the, the game board some sort of You have a bit of a depth in a sense. So what I will do now is, hmm. Oh, okay, I got an idea. So that it looks like it, yeah, it got some depth and is not so, some floating pieces of paper. And I still got um, the tiles that we have here. 
and what I will be doing now is I put them behind pretty much everything and use a motion blur and see how things will look when I do this. So blur, motion blur and it's an angle of 90 degrees and have it look like this. Of course it only should extend downwards so if I move it like so. So this has this this nice cyberpunky game glowy feel. I think it's of course it's it's too strong now, but this is was a very very quick quick and dirty way of getting this appearance. So now I'm just where is my U? Should I change the color? Maybe like like the, I, li I really like it actually this to have this this glowy appeal there. It's actually pretty cool. So the player tile. On the other hand, I feel it needs to be brighter even. Like this perhaps. Yeah, I think this looks good. And so yeah, this is a very cyberpunky horror game <laughs> in a sense. But yeah, I like it. I like it. Retirement says, what nice use of the blur filter. Uh, sometimes it works magically, other times it really ruins everything. But uh, yeah, you, you don't know if you don't uh, uh, try it out. Uh, maybe uh, I try to turn down the opacity a little bit, but then it gets a bit muddy. Yeah, I like this, this glowy, glowy appeal there. Cool. Yeah, I'm very re relieved that this worked. So let's have a look at my reference here. So um, for FTL uh, Into the Breach, they used some sort of drop shadow, but I don't think that this will work here because yeah, it's like a hologram floating, which is good. The other thing that we have now is just some sort of heads up display, um, which one should I use or which one would make sense? Of course, there is one button next turn or just something that would imply that there is some sort of yeah strategy game battle going on. And you know what? Let's, let's just invent some buttons. First, I make this big one here that just says, yeah, next turn. <laughs> and yeah, I will, I will just keep to the color scheme that we have. Um, let's go with a rounded rectangle. Yeah, make the rounding, the radius of the rounding a bit bigger, like 20 or so. Yeah, this is good, but uh, yeah, we want the shape. Okay, this is good. Again, I'm, I'm just tr trying to fake some sort of complexity. Next turn. Does the font work for us? I think it does, but let's give some other fonts a try. This is the ITC Avant-Garde. Um, I mean, it needs. It, I feel that it needs some kind of clean. This is the lemon milk. Uh, there, this one, the one that I use for fine sweeper, but it doesn't look too nice here. Nightmare, Falcon Pro. Hmm. This one is just called A. Ah. <laughs> yeah, it's not too, too nice looking. Hmm. So yeah, I got got a lot of fonts there. Futura, Helvetica. Helvetica might be a bit too boring. Then of course I got Ludum Dairy from uh, my Casper sack. Um, then of course my fonts, but they might not work in this context here. Or some some Adobe fonts like Sophia Pro. Yeah, it looks a bit boring. You know what? Let's try Ludum Dairy. Uh, it's it's a bit too. It looks a bit like a Fortnite uh, a font. In this, <laughs> it's interesting. Lemon milk is that your Minesweeper font? It's a great uh, go-to. Yes, uh, that's the Minesweeper font, and I, I think I changed the appearance of the R because uh, in my old logo you can see that the uh, downstroke of the R originates uh, where the bow 
meets the upstroke but now I moved it a little bit around just to make it look more I don't know more like the ITC, ITC avant-garde um, but the ITC avant-garde let me <laughs> just realized also has, has its R stroke there so yeah what what do I know you know what let let's go with this ITC avant-garde at least for for this button here and also let's move it down here and I will try now to give the button itself some more of an effect because as always gradient overlay is my biggest uh, uh, time saver in this regard so I uh, use a gradient that goes from one color to transparent and the one color that I want is the dark color here so yeah this this actually this looks okay <laughs> Cool. So um, yeah, now I need just to, to fake some other heads up displays. Let's, let's, oh, what can we call up? Can we come up with, um, um, let's go with, um, yeah, let, let's, let's see what, what Into the Breach does. <laughs> um, there's my reference. Cool. No, this is the other reference. This one. Okay, it says power grid reset victory in primary objective. Okay, so yeah, primary objective. This this might might be good. Primary op. Oh god, I need to look at my keyword objective. How many typos can you make in one word? The answer is infinite. So primary objective, and then I make a new one what is the primary objective survive or keep keep it alive of course keep it alive there we go this is nice okay so let's make this look a bit nicer so I need now now we're at typography primary objective I want to make this smaller because this might be some something that doesn't change the label itself but of course the text underneath changes so I think this is good let's give it a different color also in one of those shades of blue like so and look at this it looks kind of good actually so now I need to come up with a couple of more of those and I think we're good. Keep it alive. Do you have a uh, oct octagonal font? Octagonal font. Maybe it's too many octagons though for that piece. With the typography, uh, the top left looks awesome. Um, yeah, I, I think sometimes if you want to be overly fancy, this is why I don't like uh, those typical science fiction e fonts because I think it looks a bit too technical in a sense and also too hard to read. So this is why I want to have something that looks, I mean, if you have a lot of, of angles in there, I want a font that has at least some sort of uh, roundness or yeah humanity to it. And other times when there is a lot of organic forms or so, I, I, it's a it, uh, more technical font works better. But I think I'm quite happy with this one. But octagonal, I haven't heard of this font, so maybe I should check it out then. Okay, so on the other side here, let's align it there with the button because this is the right thing to do. <laughs> um, what do we have here? probably some kind of status that we have um, okay so the primary objective we got down uh, oh, let's let's get back to into the breach or oh, maybe maybe I should look at other strategy game Let, let's go just strategy game strategy game and probably be assaulted by just these uh, free-to-play games uh, of course you don't see any with HUDs maybe those um, rescue the prisoner so again we have here some sort of objective and here we got some shortcuts that we can use so those are helpful in the game the other thing are just your current or general objectives um, what did I just click is real-time strategy yeah, whatever this looks like it has some sort of oh my god it's this is a crummy JPEG seriously <laughs> 
Um, okay, let's keep this one open here for reference. Mm. Oh look, it's 4X games. This is good. This must be an old civilization game. What does it have here? Turn done. Okay, so it's yeah next turn. Free Civ Nation research. And you got... Oh, maybe this could be nice that we got some sort of... Uh, uh, a bar of of things that we can try. Maybe I can move the entire board up. Where is the entire board? Uh, yeah, pretty much everything here. So I just put everything in a bin here and move it up and hope <laughs> that I'm moving up uh, uh, the, the correct layers. Um, this weren't the correct layers. Group four was it, yeah. Group four. There we go. Okay, so a primary objective, keep it alive. Um, the other thing is here. Um, what typography the top left? Oh yeah, I um, already <laughs> read uh, this comment. Um, let's go with... Uh, I'm out of ideas of what, what our, our fictional game could have there. Let's, yeah, let's, let's try to... to um, to be a little bit cryptic and or could we work in some easter eggs this would also be nice or maybe let's let's say round this has been going on for quite a while so let's round 46 and encounter or let's say day one or something so it's it's more like, uh, yeah, Ludum Dare games. <laughs> the one shows resources in the top right, uh, Red Hermit says, and this is the screenshot he just posted. So we got some resources there. Okay, this is good. So we got round day and maybe round and day I could put those also here. And then we need, just need to come up with some sort of resources. I like that this is, uh, it's, yeah, it's like a like an inverted pyramid. This is always very pleasing. Um, so yeah, what what Easter eggs or what uh, kind of where do we have it? Um, what's here? Okay, we got some coins, some free coins, some premium currency, probably some cards, some uh, resources for building, all with numbers and icons. Okay, um, coffee, of course we need coffee. So um, I just googled for coffee icon because I'm completely unoriginal. Coffee icon. And this is what we come up with and I like this one best. So I will just steal, outright steal this one here or maybe trace it. So just copy to clipboard and paste. And I just paint over it on a new layer. So just that I get the shape down and that it's roughly in our style that we need. So five, let's go with 10 pixels. Yeah, maybe a different brush, my detailed brush. Yeah, it could be even a bit bigger now. So this is good. I mean, I could just flip it in the middle, but then it probably would look a bit too conform or too similar. Or another way of saying it, it would be too obvious that I just uh, flipped something in the middle. Because if something is too symmetrical, it looks, yeah, it looks a bit weird. Especially uh, when you see it with faces or characters, I feel that it doesn't quite work sometimes. Okay, so let's go with 20 pixels there. Uh, you probably noticed that I use the very uh, uh, un, 
intuitive way of changing pixel sizes because otherwise I could also be holding, what was it? Control, shift and right click and then change my uh, brush size like so. Why don't I do it? Because this was entirely new to me and I've learned to use Photoshop without this wonderful tool there and I'm really, I'm just, yeah, doing it the old and uh, cumbersome way of entering values by hand. So, yeah, control Z, control Z. Yeah. Uh, I won't need my reference anymore. Just go with this. Yeah, maybe I need it after all. Yeah, I think I think this this says coffee. Is it the same blue as we have here? It well, it roughly is. I think that we're good, almost good enough. It's, it's a bit brighter in the font and a bit more saturated. There we go. Colorist. <laughs> okay, so we got coffee. Um, what else can we use? Command and Stitch like a boss. <laughs> yeah, I steal like a boss. <laughs> um, what other... Um, let me just name the layer. Coffee. Other Easter egg ideas. Unicorns, theme sacks, and thinking. Uh, unicorns is always a good idea. Cheers. <clears throat> so, um, thankfully, I have a unicorn silhouette that I can just type out. Uh, for my reference, let's just increase the font size to 200 and the font is called Pixel Prophecy Logo Type and I just need to recall which um, character <laughs> I used for it um, One thing is that I've set here type options to automatically uppercase which is bad Pixel Prophecy, there we go so uh, I made my logo as a font, as you can see here, um, because uh, when I want to use it, uh, the logo in some kind of text only uh, software, where I can just combine those together on top to get uh, to arrive at my logo. So this is just a very quick way <laughs> of, of uh, yeah, importing clip arts where it's not possible to import clip arts. For example, if you really uh, need to work with uh, in, in, in Photoshop and uh, not Photoshop in Premiere with the um, scrolling text for um, credits um, and I think now you can import uh, even PNGs or so but yeah this is how I, how I did it first <laughs> just to have uh, yeah some one colored logos or so I even got a font that's called alpha symbols which is just trade logos that I needed somewhere maybe to import to Ma into Maya or so okay um, let's quickly just draw on top of it so this is why I need to change here the color of the logo and just quickly Quickly trace it badly. You would think uh, that I could draw it by heart, but I can't. Whenever I try it, it looks like a a, a chunky hamster <laughs> with a horn, <laughs> with a with a, a waffle of uh, ice cream <laughs> on its on its forehead, and not like a like a proper unicorn. So more like more like one of my. Uh, Ashley, my stuffed uh, unicorns. Okay, so I want to bring this uh, to a close now, so I think I will go just with two. Yeah, probably I need to do this in one stroke. So we'll go with just two resources, that's what I meant. Good. And then in After Effects, I will be animating some kind of mouse cursor or just some hovering over something. So yeah, I'm not quite sure what I will animate, but just something that it doesn't look like what it is right now. That is essentially a still frame. 
Does this look like a unicorn head or not quite? Yeah, not quite. But you know what? Let's let's zoom out and yeah, when I'm zooming out, all those little rough edges blur together and it looks it looks all right. But not this horn. <sighs> So let me quickly check. There we go. Coffee and unicorn. Just duplicate the layer and drop it on top of each other. Again, it's when I'm drawing and I don't get the opacity down uh, to 100%. So you can see it's, it's slightly transparent. So this is why usually I just duplicate my layers and then merge them together again. Okay, so um, let's call this uh, unicorn with a typo, as always. And make smart layers out of this. So, first we got our unicorn, then we got our coffee. I make the coffee a bit smaller now. And um, where's my type layer? There we go. And how many unicorns have we got? Uh, Red Hermit says 198801, which is birth year and month of my wife. <laughs> so this is where the Easter egg comes from. So and coffee, how much coffee do we have or do we still need? Do we? Th yeah, let's, let's separate the thousands. So how much coffee do I have? Um, not enough, not enough, just let's go with three cups of coffee. Get a lot of unicorns, but not enough coffee. Um, yeah, I, I will also change here a bit um, the sizes again of the icons. So maybe in front. Ah, oh, yeah, it's always hard. So a three, okay, there we go. It's always hard uh, trying out which size is correct or where to position things. It's why I can spend way too much time in CSS just moving things around and doesn't look any worse or better. It just looks different. And so does this make sense? Perfection, Red Hermit says, Okay, um, I have no idea what this number is, but 449076. Oh, yeah, and now it's clear that I need to move those things a bit apart. Yeah, we always like statistics and numbers in our games. So I think this is coming together quite nicely, actually. Should we also tell or, or have a label that reads unicorns or coffee? But I know I think the icon is just enough. It's your Tetris high score on Twin Galaxies. Oh my God, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's, uh, I recall I wanted to have uh, 450,000 uh, points on Tetris and this is how far I gotten. And the good thing or slash bad thing about this, I never even got close to my once record setting uh, number again, but where do I have it? I still have here my wonderful, can you see it? Yeah, um, uh, the the certificate that I once was fourth place in Tetris. And fun fact, who beat me uh, retroactively, that was Steve Wozniak. So uh, yeah, not too fond of good old Steve. But I think now I've, 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 I'm, I'm in 11th place or something, so yeah an old achievement of mine. Okay, I, I think I only need something down here. What do we usually have here? Character portraits or something, but I don't want want to draw anything else. <laughs> um, what would make sense? Steve, uh, only as five, uh, 507,000. So yeah, maybe, maybe I really should, should uh, uh, 
spend some time and practice and maybe beat Steve Wozniak by like one point in Tetris. Because, yeah, uh, I, I hold grudges for decades. <laughs> Commander Stitch says, looks legit. Oh, thank you so much. This is good. So if, if at first glance, if it looks like some sort of of a yeah, strategy game then then we're good you know what uh with the background i can squish it a bit further so it has this nice gradient going for itself so yeah maybe move this uh primary objective and so on a bit further to the left there we go, of course I forgot forgot one. Where is day? There is day. You know what, I could just take anything and just do it like this. Oh, of course, I also had next turn. Beautiful, of course. So next turn and the rectangle should be centered. There we go. Okay, this is better. Um, yeah, what to put in the other corner down here. Hmm. Yeah, let's 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 see what we can steal <laughs> from others. Okay, the, uh, may maybe some buttons like what is this? A scroll, a uh, an, an award, some book. Of course, the good old uh, uh, cogwheels. I wonder sometimes, uh, I mean the save button has been so long, the good old uh, uh, three and a quarter inch floppy disk, uh, three and a half, three and a half, five and a quarter, three and a half inch floppy disk, that at some point I think people won't recognize what this strange icon is, <laughs> essentially. Um, hmm. You know what, I will just draw a blob down there, randomly, and see if it evokes any any uh, association with anything that could be down here um, maybe some kind of counter or uh, I mean it's a strategy game what's what to strategize about maybe <laughs> maybe something like this <laughs> uh, this would you know what actually uh, maybe I will go with this I don't know what's it counting, but I like that this old styly way of, of, of yeah counting up numbers. Um, unless any of you got a better idea. I mean, it looks it looks really bare bones, but again, then it's it's just for a two second long joke, so I might might be able to get away with this. You know what just irks me a little bit now that I'm I'm looking at it. Um, this thing here that the player character is supposed to be standing on uh, it looks like uh, the, i got the perspective wrong because if this were this bottom part of a cylinder it, it doesn't line up with the perspective of our tile field hmm let, let, let me try if i can quickly fix it um it would have helped maybe if i just use proper names there <laughs> play field so this is not the player, this is the player. Good player. Okay, let me try if I can quickly mock up how it would look like. Maybe, yeah, maybe like this. It looks to be much better in terms of perspective. But now I got to get rid of the glow here and this one and of course the outline, but it's good. It's good if it makes things look better. So erase. Why can't I erase? Because I'm, no, I'm using the right eraser tool, but the wrong pencil. Oh God. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why I can't erase. Maybe I'm on the... Yes, of course, the good old thing that I'm on the wrong layer. So this was the layer of the little heart. 
and not of the player themselves because this one is here. Good to know, good to know. Um, erase, there we go. Yeah, this looks a bit better, I have to say, yeah. Now, of course, the outline is too sharp now, so I have to roughen it up manually. But I mean, this is okay since it, it's supposed to look like hand drawn anyway. Yeah, this is much better. Look at Into the Bridge, it has some gear select and a portrait, I think, but counter is way easier. Maybe I will. Uh, draw some kind of portrait I thought but then I realized that portraits usually involve people <laughs> okay so this was part one then we got here this outline so for this I needed the hard round brush uh, really cheating my way around uh, doing a proper outline there but it, I, I just say, yeah, it, it has charm. Let's let's go with it has charm. So I move the player down here. So yeah, this looks. I think this is improved, improved a lot. So the only thing to fix are those reflections down here. Player, there we go. I mean, it's really hard to tell what is going on here at the bottom of this... Oh, no. <laughs> what am I selecting? How is this... Okay, apparently I've been selecting my background color all the time, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really hard to tell what exactly is going on here, so now I'm just pretending it's just some, some, some cape here. And... Yeah, this looks much better. This looks. I'm, I'm happy that I went back in there. Um, base does look a lot. Yeah, thank you. Now there's some instruction like for mouse, right click or Q to disarm. Okay, yeah, let's let's have a look at into the breach then. Where do I have it? Yeah, let's into the breach screen shot. Usually type screen shit. <laughs> It's a source of uh, amusement. Okay, into the breach got uh, the enemy portraits and the current selection, or the, yeah, of the current selection, the current capabilities. Cannon mech and who's piloting the cannon mech, what and what uh, they can do. So maybe it's like. Um, I mean, the counter would be easier, but maybe I use some kind of use heart or something, something like this. So now the question is, on what layer did I paint this impromptu counter there? Oh, they're on top. Oh, good to know. Good to know. So let's get rid of that. And primary objective. Let's move this down and say... Um, what? Um, current unit. That sounds like a strategy game type of thing. Commander Stitch is going to dinner. Thank you so much for dropping by and enjoy your meal. Glad I was able to catch a minor portion of the stream. We'll see if, uh, if you're on when I get back. If not, great stuff. Thank you so much and enjoy your dinner and uh, greetings to your family. So, a current unit. Okay, so... Um, there is a portrait and let's let's try to mock up some like like I had here with the next uh, the next uh, turn button that I'm just using this one here I mean this would look nice and then their abilities maybe just some something like this but well, it's just a couple of icons there I think this could work nicely. Mm. 
yeah, like, like so, I think. So let's just align all those elements. Current unit. Red Hermit says, I agreed, that fills the lower uh, left well. And yeah, it, it, it makes sense. I, it looks still a little bit barren in a sense. I'm not quite sure what it is, but it's just lacking the details, I assume. Maybe just the numbers are too big here. Maybe I need a third or fourth. Yeah, mm, no matter. It's, it's, it's all right. So um, yeah, let's, let's see how I can cheat my way around the current unit and what they are capable of. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do is I just copy all those shapes on an individual layer. So that I can always come back, but I have them here much easier, more easy to, to access. And I call them just uh, blocks because I'm running out of ideas for layer names. And I will just lock to um, the visible pixels so that I, when I'm drawing inside there, that I'm not able to escape um, pixels that are not part of this layer already. And the current unit. So again, you know what? Let's let's go dark. Start with a dark background. There, yeah. Yeah, I don't care that it's flowing over the, the other and the other thing there. And give it here some kind of moody background. Because it's I mean I'm I'm picking red from a different painting, so uh, yeah, it's it's not it's not one of those colors that are that hard to figure out <laughs> that I really need to pick them. So um and it has more of this hand-drawn appeal here. But yeah, I think my brush is just just too big with 400 pixels. So um, yeah, let's let's start over with black. Yeah, let's let's start over all the way. So I'm going with 200 pixels. This is still big enough, and then I'll just pick red. I want a nice scattered gradient, but I'm not able to produce one <laughs> that quickly, that it looks also even. You know what, maybe I use, need to use Phil's salt again, otherwise it will be assaulting your eyes. Yeah, I think this, this could work. So I start with black outside and then a dark red and then a brighter red inside like this and you know what now I'm just stealing more or less this uh, head from from my other painting <laughs> person it's a bit cheap <laughs> But I think it it works. It, I think it could work. Because I'm not quite able, I think, to, to really draw <laughs> their face. Okay, so I make a new layer and use this one as a mask. Okay. Red Hermit says, uh, nice, works great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm really happy and lucky that this works. So this is cool. So okay, so what others, what other uh, capabilities do we have here? Does this uh, unit have in those blocks? Um, let me just bring this over here and yeah. layer order there. Wrong one. Uh, also wrong one but it's cool it's not as bad because I use a layer mask so if I just draw here something then then we're good 
Okay, but where does this color come from? This one looks much better. Okay, so we got three things here that we can do and I'm in the mood for some very simple, simple graphics essentially. So I will pick my, my fine brush again, make it a bit bigger. Let's go with 15 pixels. Are you just using icons for the abilities or text on them too? I think both. Uh, I mean, here with an icon, maybe, um, I don't know, is this a fist? It should be a fist. Maybe it says here uh, attack and then we have an A or left mouse button, maybe something just to give it a bit more detail. But um, we could use some kind of obscure icons. Not quite sure what this is supposed to be, but it looks a bit runish <laughs> in a sense. And what else? The eye, the ever seeing eye. Just thinking if it's icons only, you can make mysterious icons. Oh yeah, I think we're on the same page there. So it's more like hieroglyphs uh, in, in, in one way or another. How did I move my background? <laughs> okay, so here we are. Yeah, I think I will go with some weird, uh, hard to describe icons. It's like, uh, if have you seen um, the Alien film, the first one, and when you read what's actually on the keyboard that they are pushing, it's some, I can't recall really what it is, but it has some very weird uh, uh, terms. But I think something along those lines here could work well it's just so that they look uh, different so maybe one thing that looks like a box one thing that looks like a circle and one thing that looks like uh, the remainder of the old electronic arts logo there um, just from the silhouette point that it's easier to grasp what's going on more easter eggs can you put the hieroglyphs from your one uh, LD game in there oh um, the seller let me see if I can find them this is a great idea Okay, this is a job for archival Phil, archivist Phil. So where is my, of course, if, I, if you put your stylus on your tablet, then of course you, your mouth is, mouse is trapped. Okay, projects, um, game dev. Come on, there we go, archived. Was it 2018, I think, game maker. The Collector, Zocker, then it was 2017. Game Maker. And uh, no, Unity Headroom was 2017. The Seller Revamp, so it must be 2016, my god. Ludum Dial 37, The Seller, yes. And I got here Assets, there we go, wonderful character. Even got here this uh, light source inverted assets. There we go. Doorway. Yeah, everything is there. I only need to find the hieroglyphs, and I think they might be somewhere in uh, the tile map. I think. Background test cellar tiles. There we go. Ha! Wonderful. That was a great idea. So it's called Runes and I even got a Photoshop file. Last opened on uh, 1 19 a.m. on 12th of December 2016. This is great. So just invert them that we can see it better. Yes, wonderful. So which one shall we pick? I think the eye, of course. I'm not quite sure why, but it looks good. Okay, where the hell did I paste it? <laughs> um, let's make sure that I am on the right layer. And paste. There it is. Good. Next one. Um, yeah, maybe the sun thing. This looks too similar. Hmm. This one here, I have no idea what this is supposed to mean but it might work. And 
which one okay we got the round one we got uh, one that's a bit jaggedy so maybe this smoother one here those waves or this one that looks like a pony I go with the pony but it looks a bit like this one here um, I vote air which one was air <laughs> um, now this one was the cat this was the serpent mm, or pony <laughs> um, maybe hmm. The waves, the waves, yeah. You know what, let's take the waves and get rid of this thing here in the middle that I'm not quite sure what it is supposed to mean. Yeah, I mean, this looks almost like it would make sense. Almost. So I just scale all those up a little bit because it doesn't matter anyway. And then we are done, almost, I would say. Oh, of course, I'm moving all the layers <laughs> at once. <laughs> or is this too big? Mm, well, no, I think maybe, maybe a little, I'm not quite sure. Ah, I could make it smaller and give them some kind of cooldown effect even so that is a bit like this 23 and layer 22 yeah we are at layer 22 already the other ones have been named I would assume okay so I think this is nice cooldown effect and smaller is a great idea yeah otherwise it's a little bit too in your face so um, how do we do this should we keep them at black at the black color I think the black one might work um, I just stick them no I keep them where they are I combine them it's much easier <laughs> and then I a color overlay maybe just this this bright blue again that we have here or a darker blue than darker blue maybe this would have worked as well you know what I will I will stick with this blackish dark blue and but maybe I give the background yeah the, this this cooldown effect so where blocks copy is it called well, apparently it is not <laughs> anymore, but um, yeah, let's let's make it like this. I just copy this and paste it over and change its color. I really need to clean up this file before I move it to After Effects because right now it's just a mess. <laughs> so maybe this is a bit too intense, but at least, yeah, you, you know where we're going. And maybe this one here is cooling down right now. And this one here is grayed out entirely. Maybe it's like some kind of mana collection like it is in, in Hearthstone. Maybe this would, would make sense. Did I actually find here the center or was it just uh, as we say in German, uh, pi times thumb. <laughs> so this must be roughly the center. And doesn't matter where we are, maybe here. Okay. There we are. I think. I think this looks nice. Maybe the current unit, it's not aligned properly or is it? Uh, it is aligned properly, but it doesn't <laughs> look like it is because this one button here is so dark and the other ones are so bright. So maybe I give this current unit one also some kind of round border. Just need to find um, 
where it actually is in the hierarchy. Okay, so this one is the blocks copy. Okay. Yeah, right now I'm, I'm a little bit uh, at a point where I don't really care about a nice layout. I just won't want to finish it. <laughs> so um, stroke inside and with this color. Uh, two is a bit too small, I would think. Let's go with four. Uh, let's go with five and have of course the opacity to zero and uh, not the opacity the fill to zero yeah i think this is much better look at this it looks almost like a game ah <sighs> cool let's save this and how the hell did a fly get in here <laughs> um yeah actually I'm, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out Took me a bit longer than anticipated. I thought, yeah, we'll, we'll be done with this in, in two hours or so. But um, yeah, of course, there's always uh, something to tweak. For example, I don't like how these rock types are sometimes uh, not quite centered. Or, well, not sometimes is quite an understatement. They look that they are pretty much all at once somehow not properly centered. Why won't you let me move it? Okay, so I can move some of... Okay, yeah, this this looks better there. Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe a lot of those little, little tweaks. Red Hermit writes, since the abilities are essentially buttons, do you think they should kind of match the button to the right, either having a gradient on them or vice versa, taking the gradient of the next button? Uh, absolutely good point. You know what, um, let's go with the gradient because I think this would give them a bit more depth. Um, wh where do I have them? Man, I really should have, should have renamed the things. My only uh, uh, f yeah, bridge to finding which layer I am, I just select auto select layer and then I just click and hope that I'm roughly in the right, yeah, I am <laughs> in the right uh, ballpark of where where I want to to click something. Okay, so uh, select something, not click something. Gradient overlay, and it is. There we go. It is this color here. But the gradient overlay should happen after the color overlay. But I can't get this done for some reason. Okay, so Plan B. Let's make a gradient from this color to this color and then it should match. And one thing is I think I also want to have this eye since um, uh, white, that's, that's what I want to say because the next turn is also white and the other ones are essentially grayed out. I only need to find where I, where I have them. Okay, so the color overlay I have, I need to burn in, just call this icons. Hmm, or vice versa. Yeah, I think this would, this, this, this looks somehow better, I feel. Uh, uh, Red Harmon continues, yes, looks great. Uh, you made something great from nothing today. Yeah, this is, um, um, it always amazes me when I end up with something. Sorry for pointing out something to tweak. Hey, it, again, no, no, really, it's uh, any input makes it better, really. So please <laughs> don't worry. Um, I know you could tweak and polish for hours uh, for the purpose of the film. I think you're done with an excellent job on this. Thank you so much. Um, again, maybe since I got a lot of those little attempts at doing something or just some mock-ups uh, lying around. Maybe some of these I could use when I make a game in one way or another sometime. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm also quite happy with how this one turned out. And again, uh, it took a little bit longer than usual, <laughs> than uh, uh, anticipated. But uh, even at a small size, I think it looks, it could look like a strategy game. Not a triple A strategy game, but a fairly decent indie strategy game. I would, I would think. And I like how the monster, uh, the monster's teeth 
<laughs> just fell into place on first attempt. We all know it, it hardly ha ever happens. Okay, so I've been streaming for three and a half hours now. Again, it's a little bit longer than anticipated and um, did my wife uh, tell me that she's leaving at least? No, not this time because she don't ha she doesn't have to work tomorrow. So this is good. So I can still see her today. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh my God! Thank you, Red Hermit, for for uh, this wonderful uh, unicorn heart <laughs> with bits. Uh, thank you so much. And also, yeah, thank you everyone for for watching this, for just being productive alongside with your personal projects. Again. Uh, uh, re remembering that I started with nothing and now we're at this where I'm like I said I'm, I'm quite happy with and the only thing that I need to do is go to After Effects and maybe animate a cooldown effect and a mouse pointer hovering to next turn or something. Uh, apart from that uh, it's pretty much done and yeah thank you also for contributing all your feedback and the funny ideas especially with the easter eggs or, or the resources such as coffee and unicorns. Um, yeah again it, it really uh, has helped uh, finding a, a solution for all the problems that I had. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite happy. So um, yeah, Red Armin says, thanks for sharing your process with us and letting us partake in the process it was lots of fun. I'm glad it was fun. Usually it's, it's like uh, I'm, I'm sitting in front of the computer and banging my head against Photoshop and doing one single line 400 times and and it, it only gets worse. So it, it also was uh, therapeutic in a sense for me that I didn't uh, have, have the feeling that I'm, I'm just going crazy drawing this one single line and it doesn't work. It, it helped me to yeah, keep moving and and arrive at something that I'm I'm actually quite happy with how it turned out. This looks still looks weird. This one is still not inside its its tile. Oh well, like I said, I maybe come back to this and tweak. But it's so much more than an empty page that we started with. So yeah, it it was uh, yeah productive. This is great. So let me switch back to the full camera. It is me, it big, and I need to finish here because I mentioned that we used unicorns. And yes, again, thank you so much for uh, sticking with me for this in very long session. Still got seven viewers, which is, uh, I think, more than usual. And again, thank you, uh, Red Hermit, for being so... Um, uh, involved in, in, in this process. It, like I said, it really helps bouncing ideas off of somebody. So yeah, uh, uh, what I lost my train of thought there. I wanted to say something, but uh, oh yes, yeah, um, the, the, the post-mortem is coming along. This is what I wanted to say. And I, I have a, um, I can't promise that I'll be done before the next Ludum Da because I don't know what will be. Uh, expected of me the, the coming week, but I hope that I can get in some some hours of work to work on the post mortem because it's going to be cool. Like I said, I I already have fun doing spending hours on just a little throwaway gag that's just in there for a couple of seconds. But I know that some people pause on certain things, so uh, all the effort that goes in there, I know it's not going to be wasted, which is wonderful. Uh, great background music uh, today, uh, Red Herman says. Yeah, this is old music of, of mine and I thought, yeah, I might as well just throw it in there. It's not as good to uh, stand on its own, I think. But as, as long as it's not too distracting, I think it works. And perfect audio levels. Yeah, <laughs> this means a lot to me because uh, we all know uh, with me and my technical difficulties. So, cool. Again, yeah, thank you so much for sticking uh, uh, around a little bit longer this time and for uh, your input and, like I said, just making sure that I won't go crazy trying to do one line or another. And uh, yeah, I hope I see you next week. Oh my god, I completely forgot. I completely forgot I wanted to do uh, giveaways because uh, for those who don't know, Red Hermit, last week I had my birthday stream and Red Hermit was uh, uh, running a little pop quiz about fun facts about Pixel Prophecy and Sorceress won a couple of those rounds and Red Hermit was uh, kind enough to even uh, award prizes in the form of Steam keys uh, to people who had the correct answers and Sorceress was uh, nice enough to give the game Steam keys that she knew that she wouldn't be using uh, 
back essentially to me and I want to give them away. <laughs> so this long story short, give them away back to the community and I completely forgot about this. So yeah, next week, uh, if I sh forget, please, please remind me again. I got uh, three, I, I think it's still three Steam keys to different games uh, from Red Hermit, kindly donated by Red Hermit to give away. So yeah, we will see how this goes. And Red Hermit also says, looking forward to the next post-mortem when it's ready. <laughs> Thanks again for the stream and have a wonderful week. Yes, have a wonderful week and thank you for reminding me next stream uh, to, to give away those giveaways, hence the name. So yeah, have a great week. I don't know how to end stream, so I just say cheers and may the unicorns watch over you the following week and the week thereafter. And you know how it goes. Bye. <laughs>